All right. We are live. Man, we got the ultimate Avenger panel here tonight. Y'all ready? Let's do it. All right. Let's do this, y'all. What's up, everybody? We are live. Welcome to another session of the Gobble Cloud Podcast. My name is Will. I am the host of this show, number one Polynesian podcast in the world. Oh, wow. Let's get it, y'all. We have a great show for you guys tonight. I can see the readership already blowing up right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're tuning in right now for the very first time, thank you so much for tuning in. We have a great show planned for you tonight. As you guys can see, we have a packed house. We have a packed full panel tonight, and we have a hot topic and controversial topic we're going to discuss tonight. Get ready for it. Thank you for so much for tuning in. Of course, to all my subscribers out there, the people that follow my channel, support my channel, thank you so much for all the love and support. You guys already know what to do. If you support the content, appreciate all the weekly shows and the controversial and hot topics that we always discuss every single week for you guys. Don't forget to smash and press that like and subscribe button real quick. Um, don't forget, we do have a disclaimer since we're going to be talking about some controversial is issues. Uh, I do have a disclaimer and shout out to my man, Savage. This content is not suitable for the children under the age <laughs> 18 without adult supervision. Please be advised. Please be advised, man. If you are having, if you're under 18, uh, I definitely suggest for tonight's topic to have some adult supervision. But I just want to give you guys a disclaimer real quick. Uh, don't forget, we do have the live chat. So def let's def definitely get the live chat pop popping up. I've always appreciate you guys' feedback, opinions, and perspectives. And always joining in, in the conversation that we always have every weekly and sh sharing your thoughts in the live chat. I appreciate you guys. So let's definitely get the live chat pop popping up. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, don't forget, this is a public show. So if you're not familiar with my content for the very first time, I always like to invite a lot of people that's part of my audience that's watching to come on and be part of the conversation. So if you do want to be part of the conversation, I'm going to post the public link on the live chat on YouTube. So if you're watching this right now from Facebook or Twitch, you have to come to YouTube, to the YouTube live chat. I'll pin it to the top of the screen, click on the public link, and you guys can be also be part of the conversation. I know there's a lot of people that are triggered by my content. You triggered my trap card. All right. A lot of people disagree. A lot of people hate my content right now. Uh, so like I said, if you disagree, a lot of things I said, especially I do know right now on, on TikTok, there's a lot of people coming for me from the obese community. But anyways, uh, hey, if you disagree with something I said, I, I'm always open to have open dialogue conversation. Obviously, I have to stress this. If you see a content I post on TikTok, on Instagram, just understand it is a clip. So if you want to get the full context of everything, you have to come on to the YouTube channel and check it out so you can understand the content, the, the, con the context of the conversation. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Your eyes are always welcome. So if you disagree, a lot of things that we say tonight, I invite you to be part of the conversation. And let's have a conversation conversation on why we disagree. And uh, but hey, I open up for everybody here that's watching this right now. I see you, Jamal, right here, already posting the first comment on the Polynesians aren't racist. All right, appreciate it, Jamal. <laughs> Well, we'll find out tonight, Jamali. We'll, we'll find out tonight whether we're racist or not. And that's up, that's up for debate. Uh, but <laughs> thank you so much, Jamali. I appreciate you on the live chat. Let's get definitely, definitely get that live chat popping. Don't forget, this is uh, I appreciate all you guys always on the super chats, donating, donating financially, financially to my channel. Always appreciate you guys uh, with all the super chat donations. Every single donation will be reinvested back to my content to give you guys better quality content. And of course, I'm going to be launching my podcast studio by the end of this year. Uh, to have in live, I uh, have real life uh, podcasts in studio. So thank you so much for everybody out there always donating. I see you running up already. LOL, running. Up. Hey, what's up, running up, man? Been a long time. See you, brother. Good to see you on here on on the channel on on the live podcast. Uh, but yeah, if you want to ask, if you have a specific question, if you have a specific topic that you guys want us to respond live to you and discuss as a panel, ask it through a super chat donation. I'll make it a priority. I'll put it on top of the screen. I'll make sure I read it out for you. Give you a shout out. And it will also give some time to the panel to re respond to you directly as well. So thank you so much for all the super chat donations. Um, that's pretty much all my YouTube stuff. We have a great panel. I don't want to. I don't want to take any more time. I'm gonna get right into it and start the, and start the conversation tonight. But first and foremost, I just want to give a shout out to all the guests. All right, shout out to all the guests uh, for taking the time to be here tonight and having this open discussion. And uh, thank you so much for all you guys. But real quick. Uh, I know we have some new faces here for the first time tonight. I want to allow everybody to go ahead and introduce themselves real quick. So I allow the new guests first to go ahead and introduce themselves real quick to my channel and all the live viewers right now. So I'll start with you, uh, Roll Killer. Roll Killer, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Malo Lavo Soifu Mau. 
Malangma. My name is Rosie, uh, but I go by Rokilla on TikTok. Uh, I grew up in Upolu and American Samoa. Uh, my mother is Upolu. My father is African American, and um, I I just really found it interesting. And I reached out to Will, and I was like, I would like to be part of the podcast. So um, I will put note. I been banned on TikTok a couple of times for um, speaking my experience, just sharing my experience. Um, and so I can't wait to get into and meeting every last one of you here on the panel. Um, thank you guys so much for the opportunity and for having me. Hello, Ro Killer. Hi. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ro Killer. I feel like the part of the qualification, the qualification to be part of this podcast, you have to be banned at least once uh, to join the Kava <laughs> Club podcast. I always attract the people to get banned for some reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much, Ro I appreciate you uh, being on tonight's podcast. I'll pass it to you, Daniel. Daniel, go ahead, man. Introduce yourself real quick. What's going on, everybody? I'm Black025. You guys see me all over TikTok. If you don't, Look on TikTok, Black Zero underscore 25. You can catch me on Instagram also, Black Zero 25, 1988. I am Black and Samoan. My dad is actually born and raised in Samoa, uh, American Samoa, and then came over to the United States when he was 18. Met my mom. Boom. Three, three months later, they got married. And then, of course, I came out. You know, we don't waste time. So I also have two siblings. And uh, when I heard about this, uh, subject. I definitely actually wanted to talk about it, but Mr. Will here sent me a, sent me a message and asked me if I wanted to join the panel. And of course, I was very happy to receive an invite. So I was here on time and even early. Uh, <laughs> but I've seen most of you guys on either TikTok or Instagram, and I've seen most of you guys speak your guys, uh, you know, speak out or speak up in certain situations. So I felt like I definitely wanted to be a part of this. Uh, you know, this podcast, especially this one being, you know, being a half and half. Um, also, um, I'd like to hand, hand you back the floor. That's me. All right. <laughs> all right. No worries. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, also, uh, I love uh, Black Zero's content, especially with all the anime fans out there. Uh, all the anime fans out there. <laughs> check out Black Zero. <laughs> check, check out Black Zero's uh, content. I, I love that content, man. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you so much, Black Zero. Appreciate you being on tonight. Uh, let me pass it on to the newest guest. Uh, also, yeah, E. Sarah, uh, also known as Mr. Coconut. First time on the, on the panel. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. <coughs> Shoot. Uh, my bad. My name is E. Sarah Tuaolo. I'm... Uh, I was born in American Samoa, and I was raised in Waimanalo, Hawaii. Um, spent most of my time here. I'm a content creator on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, yeah, I just do like superhero anime stuff. So I don't know. If you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't, well, I mean, go see it. It's Mr. Coconut on TikTok and Instagram. So I'm just doing things outside of the norm. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> really right. Boris, Boris, Mr. Coconut, uh, and thank you so much for taking the time. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. And also, uh, Malia, I see my boss lady. Malia, what's up, y'all? I wish I could join y'all tonight, but I'm in vacation mode. I don't see color. I'm legally blind. <laughs> All right. No worries. No worries. They get teased up. Said, hey, hey, what's up, teased up? Always appreciate you uh, being on the live podcast. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all the new guests. Let me pass on to my veteran guests. Let me start off uh, with Savage, man. Long time no see, Savage, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Uh, well, what's up, man? My name is uh, Henele Aleki Sanita Tevisi Leiliki. I am the son of Lavileni Samt and Siosiana Leiliki. I hail from Vavau Tonga. Um, I'm first generation born here in America and indigenous to the island of Tonga. I'm the guy the pastor wor uh, warned you about. I'm Lucifer. I'm the devil. I'm the I'm the motherfucker that comes to the place that you whisper about. Them rumors you heard, yeah, all of them are true. So disrespectfully, suck my dirty dick from the back and fuck all you haters. I came to speak some real shit. Fuck you. All right, no worries. All right, that's just a, that's just the normal, no more introduction from a savage. <laughs> I appreciate you, savage. I always appreciate you on here. Uh, and I see T's up said a comment. Uh, T's up said. 
uh, oh, Samoan King, where the link is at? Uh, hey, I'll post a link right after the introduction. Everybody gets to share their piece. I pass on the link for you guys, and you guys can jump on as well. Uh, I pass it on to you. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hey, you guys. Um, it is extremely important that I convey authenticity, and to do so, I want to start my genealogy as a Tongan American. My name is Lisa Havili. My father is Mafi Kafusi Havili from the village of Bangai Hapai. My mother's Fuelupe Talanoa from the village Homa. Um, my parents migrated from the Bay Area in the 80s, and I am first generation immigrant born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, I reside in East Palo Alto. Yeah, originally home to the Ohlone tribe, and I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory I reside on. I also want to pay homage to the sacrifices of enslaved Africans and their descendants and recognize their respective contributions to our world and societies. With that being said, I am extremely excited to contribute to this panel, and I look forward to this uh, Talanoa. All right, no worries. All right, thank you so much, Alisa. I always appreciate you having uh, being you on here. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, and of course, uh, Tease Up said, uh, Tui got a new man. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tease Up. <laughs> thank you, Tease Up, for sharing it. Hey, Tease Up, you've been watching this for a while, so you already know what's up. <laughs> you already know what's up. So thank you so much for showing this. Um, pass it on to you, Rose. Rose, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Talo Falava. My name is Rose. I'm I grew up in California, East LA, Salt Lake City, and I'm currently in Vegas. I am half Samoan and half Hungarian. As you can see, Hungry Samoans, that's my uh, tag for Instagram. I also have a podcast that I talk about cultural stuff, more so to do with um, higher consciousness. So basically bridging indigenous culture and higher consciousness is really what my podcast is about. And yeah, I'm very grateful to be here and to meet you all. So yeah, thank you. All right, no worries. Rose, always appreciate you guys. And I definitely drop her link to her podcast on the description below. So definitely follow her podcast. I appreciate you guys uh, on right now on the live chat. Thank you so much, Rose. And last but not least, I'll talk all the way from New Zealand. Uh, go ahead, Daniela, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Hey, Malo Lele. Man, I, how do you follow up with a, with a panel of, you know, with this <laughs> stature, I, I guess, especially after Savage? Um, but yeah, I think anyone who's not new to the podcast would have seen my ugly mug all over the place. Um, but if you're not, if you're new, I'm a, well, I'm a bit of a Polynesian Pacific Islander mutt in the sense that, uh, part of my genealogy hails from America Samoa, from Tutuila, which is my mother's maiden name, uh, follows, follows through the Tutuila bloodline and my dad's, uh, from Hapai, uh, Tonga. And he's, uh, his genealogy comes from a part of the Tuitonga, which is uh, Tuitonga Pau. But in saying that, um, yeah, I feel privileged to be a part of a, a panel of world diverse and uh, Pacific Islanders willing to have a Dalano around a subject as this, even though we may disagree or agree on certain things. I am looking forward to this Dalano. And thank you, Will. Uh, I think a lot of us especially existing within the virtual world of social media, love to have opinions and love to write them down in little nice paragraphs. But it's not until you're confronted with people that disagree with you that you prove your grit. So I'm looking forward to this Talano and anyone else who might jump on with a hint to uh, run it up in Boss Lady. All right. No worries. No worries. Thank you. I see you, Daniela. Man, you're licking your chops already, Daniela. I, see <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. I see you. For tonight's conversation, no. So thank you so much, right now. I appreciate you guys. First of all, first of all, let's get let's get those likes, y'all. I see like about almost about twenty plus people already watching this live. So let's get those lives. Don't be ninja watchers, y'all. Press that like 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 button. And of course, if we earn your if we earn your respect and you appreciate the content, subscribe to the channel as well. So don't forget, I'm going to post a public link real soon. And then once everybody's done sharing their opinions, I'll be able to allow you guys to come on. If anybody out there want to be part of the conversation or I uh, want to challenge us on the things that we discussed tonight. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. You guys already know the topic that we're going to discuss tonight. You guys can see on the bottom of the panel. Uh, does racism exist in Polynesian culture? All right, so uh, I'll start it off with our newest guest. Let me know what you got, what your thoughts are. And I'll start off uh, with Rokilla, Rokilla. Go ahead, start off the panel. Go ahead. Uh 
let's get into it. I want to say that maybe it's just my experience um, because one, my mom, um, like I said, is Upolu. And so at the age of 10, we left Lakewood, California. Um, I was, let me go back. I was born in Hawaii though. My mom w- uh, came to the United States in the eighties, um, kind of went through that weird like crack phase era, um, had a bunch of kids, but we all had different dads. And out of five kids, I'm the only one whose father is black. Um, I grew up with family. My mom didn't raise us. And so by the age of 10, I was having issues. Like I I was wilding. This long story short, I ran away from school. It was all types of stuff. Um, and so they were like, it was the fob version of Fresh Prince of Ballet. Like you're going to Upolu. Um, kind of just left there. It was different going from America to Polo. Long story short, I want to say I was treated different um, a lot of the times. So I I do believe racism exists. A lot of people say it's my experience just because like my family doesn't have, you know, like they're nobodies. Long story short, my last name is Vawifi. My grandfather comes from the village of Luotuanu'u. It is the village after Lauli'i and the village right before Solo Solo. Um, And so it's in the Samoan culture, a lot of the times it's not, it's it's stature. A lot of it has to do with money. A lot of it has to do with who you know and your bloodline. And I I don't wanna go past my time, but I wanna start off there. And so I say, yes, it does exist. I was treated different. A lot of the times in school, I wasn't picked. I went to Tafuna High School and Manua High School. I transferred back and forth because I kept getting into fights. Um, I wasn't doing well. I tried everything like, (laughs) savage. I tried everything like, you know, doing sports. They never picked me. Only thing that um, I stood out was junior ROTC and cheerleading. I finally got my foot in there. And I went from, you know, I, I went from there. Like, that's the only thing that they let me do as far as kids are mean. Top, and I just want to start off there. I'm sorry. I'm nervous, y'all. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No worries. We'll kill it. Don't worry. You ain't got shit to be nervous about. When you talk, talk to these people like they're kids. <laughs> No worries, uh, uh, thank you for sharing and I appreciate everybody in the live chat. Uh, but we'll definitely come back to you, Rokila. Um, I'll pass it on to you, uh, our newest guest, uh, Daniel. Daniel, the floor is yours. Go ahead, brother. All right, so <clears throat> like I explained to the panel earlier, I am black and Samoan. My dad is, I'm a lafoa to itelele apanga. We row from uh, Pango Pango and uh, Utule. And um, when he first, from what I understand, obviously I wasn't there. My dad always liked black women, even from on the island. So he would say things like, oh, when I get to America, I'm going to marry myself at my only woman. You know, that's not the proper way of saying it, but he used to say that. Yeah. And he not not understanding, but that's what he used to say. And um, when immediately when he met my mom, they got married really, really fast. So I didn't understand if there was racism or not. I know that we were treated a lot. Uh, separate from everybody else. We were moved to Anaheim to be away from most of the family for for a while. It was a little weird, but as I got older, I understood that it wasn't the generation that was raising us that didn't like us. It was the generation right before that. So it would be my great aunts and my great uncles that would have negative things to say in Samoan about my mom and her skin color. And my dad is Samoan. So anybody who fucks with his wife, he's going to say things. But he's also 18 years old. Samoan knows the knows our ways. And the best way to handle that situation is just to move away from it at the time. This was also the 80s and 90s. I'm actually 34 years old. I look young. I know. So in my experiences growing up, I can say that there was times I felt 
that I was treated differently, that I, it might not have been racism, but then there was times that I was treated differently that I didn't know was racism that I didn't pick up on. And I was very sheltered by my parents to not understand that until I was older. So is there racism in the Polynesian culture, especially in the Samoan culture? Yes. But do I think that it's been a lot, it has been weeded out a lot in the generations? I do. And the only reason, and I don't want to go over my time, but I'm going to explain this a little, a little bit. My mom's family and my dad's family, when they migrated from Samoa, migrated to San Diego and El Cajon, San Diego. And my mom's family is from El Cajon, San Diego. So all of the family grew up together on both sides, even before my mom and my dad actually met. So when they met, our families got along really well, the younger ones, because they were all going to high school with each other anyway, and all on the same football team. <laughs> so that kind of killed the racism being passed down. We didn't have that growing up. It was always the older people. That's all I want to say about that, and we can move on. Thank you very much. All right. No worries. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. I uh, appreciate you for sharing that, and uh, shout out to my newest guest. Uh, but let me pass it on to our veteran guest. Oh, I forgot about it. We have one more new guest, <laughs> Mr. Coconut. <laughs> Ms. E. Sarah, go ahead and uh, go ahead. It's your turn, man. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah, my bad. Um, so, I mean, when I was growing up, my, my pops was uh, the complete opposite from, from Black Zero's pops. I mean, it would have been awesome for him to want to marry a Black woman. But instead, he was like the complete opposite. He hated Black folks. Um, and my dad was very racist towards a lot of races, not just black folks, but he was just very racist. And <clears throat> when I was young, I, I didn't understand at the time until my mother told me that, you know, all that stuff that my dad was talking is, is you know, it's wrong. So if it wasn't for my mom and, you know, just kind of me figuring it out for myself, uh, I'd say, you know, I probably would have followed in his footsteps, but, you know, I thank God for my mom. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, there, there, it does exist in the Polynesian community. Um, it, I wish it wasn't so, but you know, there, there are some, some families out there with, uh, you know, with preconceived notions of racism, pretty much. But, you know, that's that's my thought. That's my thought on it. I guess. Sorry. No worries, man. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate you guys, all the new guests, for coming on and sharing it. I just gonna read out some comments real quick on the live chat. I see you guys going off. Uh, you guys are lit right now in the live chat. Uh, I see that he's upset. Let the racism die with us. We are all mixing in America. Some of some of us are keeping it within the culture, but there's nothing wrong with marrying out. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, Run it up said. Uh, I've noticed more Samoans married American flags than say Tonga in my experience. And then John Doe uh, said that I got hella half Ululi family in LA in Lenox. All right, thank you for you guys for sharing. I always appreciate you guys on the live chat. Uh, thank you so much for being on live chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Of course, I just posted the public link on the, on the YouTube live. So if you guys want to jump on, you guys can go ahead and jump on as well. Uh, but yeah, but thank you for all the newest guests. Uh, let me pass it on to a veteran guest real quick. I'll start with you. Uh, Lisa, go ahead and share your thoughts real quick. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay, you guys, just please bear with me because my video is the one who actually went viral with this. So I, I do want to address it real quick. And I am going to be reading it. So I, I'm precise with what I need to say. Okay, so um, so I want to address my clip that apparently has gone viral and triggered a lot of my brothers and sisters. The comment section, both on Instagram and TikTok, is a great indicator of how divided we are as people. I want to acknowledge that I do know that there are Polynesians who are out there here doing the work to unlearn the racial ideologies we grew up with, relearn the truth and confront those who, who do have those ideologies. And for that, I want to reframe what I said on my, on my clip as all Polynesians are racist to majority of Polynesians are racist. And I am using the word racist as a noun. I'm talking about a person and or people who are prejudiced against or towards particular race or ethnic group. So um, there's a lot of comments saying to don't generalize, it's just your family, speak for yourself. And what I, what I have to say to that is you are right. I should not generalize, but what we are not going to do is sit here and say that this does not happen and this is not what's going on in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, there are many comments stating that there's racism everywhere. It happens in every culture. No shit, Sherlock, but we are only focusing on our culture. 
Um, there's comments saying that because we like to date and marry within our culture means we are racist. I never said that or touched on that. I don't give a fuck what you do with your dating life. Um, there's co also comments saying that because I married outside of my culture that I don't have a right to say what I said about the older generation. And what I have to say to that is I am still Tongan regardless of who I marry. And if not me, then who? Because obviously no one has the balls to confront the older generation and their bigotry. So there are personal comments in regards to my husband and I, and we are not triggered by it at all. We actually laugh at it because we know you are all keyboard warriors, and but best believe in real life, you will never have the courage to step to us. Um, there are so many comments who agree with what I said. They understand the underlying issue and experience it firsthand. And for that, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Um, I wanna shout out a comment from Torch Talaw57 on TikTok. TikTok where he states she wants to blast her family members for being insensitive, but can't do so, so she blasts the entire Polynesian community. Okay, a little, uh, a little backstory. I've been with my husband for 18 years and our daughter is actually 15 years old. Do you really think that this conversation hasn't been had amongst my parents and family members? Do you really think I would have that toxicity around my husband or kids? I had to correct my parents and my family for the things they would say, and I had this conversation 18 years ago. Never had to have that conversation again. Um, my, my husband also understands that because of how my parents grew up, that it would take some time to unlearn and relearn, and so this journey has been a labor of love. Um, I confront and then educate, and then you can take it however you want to take it. Like I said, I've already continued and continue to have these conversa conversations, hence the reason as to why I'm comfortable saying this out loud. Um, one more thing. Sorry, you guys. I know I'm going over, but I just want to just really reply to these comments. Um, there's a comment where someone tried to correct me for calling my husband and our kids black and use the correct term African-American. My husband, racial identity is very personal and he prefers the term black because not like, not like us, we can trace our lineage and go back to our island if we decide to. He can't. Being black to him is more about his race. It's his entire culture, the entire black power movement of racial pride and empowerment. We believe in freedom for all or freedom for no one. And this is the standard we live by. That is why I refer to him as black. Um, Let's see, sorry you guys. Uh, one last thing, the most interesting comments I read and it was said multiple times is this is true, but this is something that should not be discussed in public, but behind closed doors. And to that I said, stop hiding. How are we supposed to heal and break the cycle if we can't discuss this openly? Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. That's just my response to all these comments. Thank y'all. Ah, ah. <laughs> Kill him. Kill him. That's what I'm talking about. I got about. the chill. Lisa got him. Came ready. Came ready, man. Lisa, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, for being on here tonight, and thank you for sharing. I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Let me pass it on to uh, Rose. Rose, what do you think, Rose? All right. Um, I'm just going to talk about my experience with um, within the Polynesian culture. So I grew up in East L.A., and I didn't even know that I was Samoan and Hungarian. I didn't understand uh, – race at that age I just understood um well I went I, I was just surrounded by Mexican so I literally thought I was Mexican even though I didn't really understand Spanish but I did understand uh, Samoan because my mom spoke it to us at home um but growing up in East LA and being around Mexicans I didn't we didn't have we didn't know what Polynesian what Samoan culture was until we moved to Utah and then in Utah that's where I started to I met my extended family and we, cause we lived with them. And that's when I really, we, we got, we felt, we felt ostracized. We felt picked on being half. It was just like, Oh, you're so skinny. Um, uh, you don't, we didn't understand Fa Samoa. So there was just so many things that, that gave me really negative impressions about our culture. I really hated it when I was young. I didn't really want anything to do with it, but we went to Samoan church at the time, being Mormon in Utah. There's a lot of Polynesians in Utah that are Mormon. And I was picked on, me and my family were picked on, my siblings, but I didn't really care for it because I already, I had such a, a um, I was just very headstrong. It didn't, none of that mattered to me, but did it, affect me yeah it affected my family in a lot of ways because my mom having married having been with my dad 
and being the only one that got with uh, Palangi, her family treated her the worst and we got the tail end of that. So there is just so much negativity, so much of the discrimination being half because we were light skinned, because we didn't um, speak it someone, we didn't understand the culture, we didn't understand, you know, like we we were always um, yelled at, like, oh, you didn't, you didn't, you have to, you know, say too low when you pass someone. And we're just like, okay, we're learning these things. But oftentimes we would get hit for it. We would get, um, we would always be told negative things. And so that always left a, a negative impression on me with the culture. And um, yeah, so that's my experience growing up with it. I'm, I feel a lot different about it now that I'm older and I'm learning about it, really what our, our real culture is. But growing up with my mom's extended family and just Polynesians in Utah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good experience at all. I hated it. So, yeah. Okay. All right. No worries. Uh, thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose, for sharing. Um, let me, I'll pass it on to you. Uh, Tui, are you good or no? All right, cool. All right, Tui. Take it away, Tui. Well, I'm going to start off with saying I don't think that all Polynesians are racist, but they are discriminatory. They, and I, I do mean all. All of us are. We discriminate against each other. We discriminate against other Polynesians that are mixed with other races. It's just a fact. If you say that you're not, you're a liar. Um, also, I just type some things down. Hold on one second. Um, discrimination is unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people or things, especially on the grounds of race, age, and sex. The fact of the matter is people, including Polynesians, are ignorant. Whether it be in social issues or racial ones, Polynesians tend to stick to what they know, which is what they are taught at home. Not always necessarily good things. Granted, our people are very loving, we show a lot of love for our family. We have grounded traditions. Um, cooking is one thing that bonds us together, but ignorance is something that makes us all the same. That's all. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tui. I appreciate you, Tui. Thank you for sharing. Uh, <clears throat> let me pass it on uh, to uh, Savage. Savage. Go ahead, Savage, man. This is your turn. Do your thing, Togo. You're on mute, I think. You're on mute, Togo. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to speak with somebody. Um, you know, racism does exist in, in the community, in the culture. Um, and I'm going to give a little bit of context because what people were triggered about was they thought they heard Lisa say, all Polynesians. If you go back and watch the, the episode clip, the context was the marriage scene in the culture. She was speaking from experience. Why I don't understand how anybody could be triggered by someone's experience means to invalidate them. So because she felt that, you now discredit her, trying to silence her. Fuck you. You know, you know, you know, you know better than the than the shit that goes on as far as injustice here in America. So let me straighten you out in that first fact. That was the context. She was talking about marriage. So why you were triggered by that was because of what the key word was Polynesian. Now, if you abide by the word Polynesian, I simply ask you this. What is the root of it? What's the definition of the word Polynesian? Does it come from us? What is the word in Tongan? What is the word in Samoan? What is the word in Hawaiian? No, no, no. You break that shit down to me and you explain that because I have to deal with that every fucking day when I talk to my nieces and nephews and my sons and daughters. Suck my dick. Disrespectfully. I came on this episode so I can get at you bums because you want to sit there and be quiet. The same motherfuckers who would sit there and watch their niece get touched is the same motherfuckers who would sit there and quiet this shit down. Fuck you. You can meet me in the darkest alley, and we can really talk about this. Now, I can't speak for the islands, but here in America prominently, yeah, that shit real. I've heard my brothers and sisters. I've said it from the N-word to Miko 
right? Calling Asians, like Xiaobani, all these words that we've coined now only came when we left the island. Why? Because now we have to assimilate. So don't sit there and tell me this shit don't exist. Motherfucker, we modernize it. Who the fuck are you kidding? You want to reap the benefits, but you don't want to go through the bullshit? Fuck you. I don't understand you. You see, the problem is here is why I'm so passionate speaking like this is because you see it. And the only reason why you don't speak on it is because it don't affect you firsthand. But should it be a niece, a nephew, a granddaughter, a grandson who's going through it? Then you want to step in. Hmm? That makes sense. Some community we are right now. Oh, I, I see the comments. Not all Polynesians are racist. Motherfucker. Polynesian doesn't even exist. If you want to get technical, right? But you don't want to go down that hole. You ain't want to have that conversation. Trust me, dog. I'll run laps around you. I'm all money in, no money out. I've been about this shit. I'm from East Oakland, California. 94th and Birch. I've been in Cali putting the, I've been doing this shit. Sun up till sundown. So don't come at me telling him, talking that good shit because you you will reap the benefits, talk all that shit. But when it comes time to really understand where the root of this comes from, you will find yourself next to the source. Straight up. And I say that so passionately. Now that I've gotten that out the way with the little time that I have, welcome. My name is Savage Island, and I hope we can get down to the bottom of this and find some solution because that's really what this should be about. Solution. So... From me to you, I love each and every one of you. And if you don't feel the same way, more power to you. Thank you. All right, no worries. <clears throat> Shout, out Savage. Savage. <laughs> Shout out to Savage, man. I always appreciate oh, you. No, no. I just want to read this real quick from the book that I was reading earlier from my class. It says, go ahead, go ahead. The, Christ the Christian missionaries were convinced that these complicated rituals were the work of the devils. And these savages needed to be educated and converted to be more civilized in the way of living. That comes from Dance and Cultural Diversity in Chapter of Polynesia. That's how that's what they thought of us. Their first meeting after we let our women fuck them and gave them food. Just saying. All right, no worries. Save that, save it. We got we're gonna open up for discussion. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> We're going to open it up. Thank you so much, Black Zero. Um, Savage, appreciate keeping it real, keeping it 100. Um, and I'll pass it on to you, Daniela. Uh, for all the panel, we're going to open up the discussion right after Daniela. So, uh, yeah, if you want to go and open up the discussion, go first. Let me know, and I'll come to you right after Daniela. But, Daniela, go ahead. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that uh, topic? Yeah, I, um, I agree with pretty much what the panel was saying. You know, there's in the culture, there's elements of racism. And for someone who was born and raised in Tong and Tonga, I could see it, especially with the uprising of Chinese dairies all over the place. One of the biggest uh, burning of the capital, first thing that was uh, burnt down in, in all major village were all the Chinese dairies. Um, so when we, I think the confusion within the community is that our metric is the white man racism. But here's the big difference. Oftentimes the, right, the white man's racism leverage power and they have power through forms of currency leadership and institution that's the massive difference so when the community look at racism and racist ideologies we metricize it based on the white man but we ain't got no power although the idea the ideology is still within us if you look at interaction all throughout you know the ogs even the way that we look at certain races there are elements of racism uh, ideologies that we have the only difference is we can't leverage anything on it other than saying specific things, teaching our kids to look at life a certain way, whereas the white man could keep you out of a job uh, and has, and that, you know, keep you from opportunities and all that shit. That's why it's so hard for us to even comprehend the idea of racism. And I think there was a term that was used before or a line of saying that hate is taught. And I, I don't believe that. In order for you to conjure up love, there is an element in you that knows hate. So it is, it, to me, it's natural. All these negative elements that we have, hate, uh, prejudice, judgment, those are all natural um, things that we have as human beings. And if you want to go the spiritual route, it teaches that in order for you to be whole, you have to accept the shadow that is within you. So all these things are and within the culture. 
The only thing that we, I think we victimize ourselves to the point where we can accept that the culture persists negative ideologies, especially if we relate it back to white men, you know, colonizers and all that shit. So that's what I think. All right, no worries. <clears throat> uh, thank you for sharing that, Daniela. We're definitely going to open up for discussion. Um, Savage, I just saw you in the private chat. You said you didn't agree. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, just on the concept of hate, I don't believe that's natural at all. Because I could simply ask a question. When has uh, hate benefited anybody? You know, just realistically. it could. I, I could understand the emotion or the feeling of dislike, maybe. But as far as hatred goes, you go down history, and I would ask you, when has hatred benefited anybody? And anyone in history who's died of that of that behavior and attitude, you will understand they died a very horrible and had a very bad lineage left behind. Because I'll tell you this much: if it is natural, how come kids can't? How come kids can't act that out? It's learned behavior. All right, Daniela, you want to respond real quick, Daniela? If I pass it to yeah. zero. The simple concept of in order to teach, it must come from something. So where did it first begin? It has to come off some sort of nature. So in order to teach something, it has to be nature. But to answer your, con of your question about hate and where historically, if we look at the Duitonga dynasty, the beginning of the assassinations of the Duitonga where the breakage and linkage between Ha'amoa and Tonga from marriage between the, the empire. Then there was an uprising of the Tonga assassination, usually dealt by Ha'amoan wives, Ha'amoan second sons and all of that. So I'm not blaming the culture in terms of hate, but in order for something to be taught, it must become nature. And in order for something to become nature, it has to be taught. So there's a loop there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, Black Zero, you know you wanted to add on? Go ahead. Yeah, um, what I wrote down when you said the hate thing, um, well, I wrote, I accidentally said something else on the chat, but I was going to say hate only comes from experience. So if somebody, if you experience something towards somebody else, meaning if somebody punches you in the back of the head or kills your dog, then that emotion flares up. But I don't, but you don't see that with children. You don't see them hate somebody. You see them go through these experiences and then next thing you know, they forgive and forget. I think that hate comes from the experience of somebody growing up with the constant uh, induction, indoctrination of something for for you to actually hate something because a lot of people still grow out of that. So that's that's all I wanted to say. Okay, go ahead, Savage. So going back to you know the the, the root just with, with the hate thing, nature, right? So the the context is now nature, and then if you learn it, learn something, it's now nature, and that's what's taught. If that be the case, why can I be mad at my wife after an argument? Absolutely. Just piss the hell off. I made an accurate point, right? And I'm trying to stay mad at her. And obviously, I'll go sit in the living room. She will walk right out the room butt-ass naked. I will forget completely why I was mad. That's nature. Because the man's behavior is, oh, shit, I'm sexually attracted. I absolutely forgot why I was mad. Absolutely. That's nature. Now, experience would say otherwise. I don't have to assassinate someone because I hate them. I could take it on as a job. You get what I'm saying? So if you believe that's nature and nature is taught to someone, I would simply ask you this. Then how the hell do kids pick up any of the things they learn if a parent is not there? You get what I'm saying? So if nature is something we are learning and then teaching, then if my son sees my wife naked, well, he should be, probably be aroused as well which most of the time that's not the case because kids are not concerned with that because of what? Child development. So child development d dictates this. Kids absorb. They're in an in a absorbing stage. Anything they pick up from what we do, they're learning, whether it be nature or not nature. I could just, I could completely hate white, black, uh, Samoan people. I can hate all these people in front of my child for the next five years. Then that will become nature to them. I, I do believe that. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for saying that, uh, Savage. Did anybody on the uh, the panel want to add on to the conversation? Before I, I have some public guests, I'm going to add them on real quick and I get their feedback. I wanted to uh, respond to this nature thing. Um, for sure, nature has to do with biological, what's inherent, what you you know, what you get from your parents. 
nurture is what Savage was talking about is when you nurture your ch children or condition them to feel or to think a, a certain way, like the racial ideologies that our parents grew up with, that's purely nurture. Um, that constant, those ideologies that are constant within our community, like let's give, for example, um, I don't want you to go outside um, in the sun because I don't want you to get dark. Mm. Um, uh, another thing, um, your hair is too mini mini. So now I'm straightening my hair throughout my whole childhood. Mm. Those things are nurtured. That's right. not nature. It's what's been conditioned for us. It's actually been conditioned for us to think a certain way to, you know, to, it's that Eurocentric standard that we've been conditioned to think that that's the standard of beauty. That's all I have to say. All right, yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. I know, Daniela, you wanted to respond real quick. Go ahead, Daniela. Yeah, but just responding in the sense of, I'm not saying hate is a constant, just like love, just like any sort of emotional experience that we go through. The, the point that I'm getting at is that if we are capable of love, we're also capable of fate. So therefore there is an element within us, whether that's by nature or nurture, we can debate that at a later stage, but the, to me, the simple fact that you possess capability to love someone wholeheartedly also gives you the the other side of that nature. And I think if you want to go down certain quotes and whatever it is that that uh, that we find meaning of, you know, where there's light, there's always shadows. If that's a comparable uh, sort of notion, but in order for you to be capable of love, there is elements of hate there. Whether you exercise that hate and physicalize that out into the real world, that's a different question. But to say that hate is something that we're completely absent of and that is taught to us, that's where my screaming comes from. I'm not talking about whether we actually enact hate or we visualize and actualize it in real life. What I'm trying to get at, at the point is if you have the capability for one, you also have the capability for the other. All right, no worries. All right, thank you for sharing it, Daniela. Um, Oh, Rose, you want to uh, you want to go real quick? Go ahead, Rose. Yeah, I just want to say I, I agree with you, Dan Daniela, about it um, because hate comes from fear, comes from anger, comes from a sense of injury. So those are natural things. You're going to naturally have that fear because that's fight or fight. That's for survival. So that is a natural feeling. And yes, there's going to be opposites. So with fear, you're going to opposites would be love. With anger, opposite would be peace. So or opposite would be peace. So I agree that is natural feelings, natural emotions that we have as human beings. But the way you guys were talking about with the nurturing and learning certain things and being indoctrinated, yeah, that does happen as well. So I think we're all on the same page. We're just kind of talking about little different things here and there. All right, no worries. Can uh, I say you, something? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Savage, yep. Like I don't fuck with etymology. So if you're going to get etymological with these terms and stuff, just know uh, I, I'm completely not, you know, I'm not phased by that in any way, shape or form. So you guys can say hate or whatever, but hate is hate. And that is not natural. And I mean that that has nothing to do with nurture or nature, hate. And in no way, shape or form, I can tell you this for sure. It's not the opposite of love, but that's just my opinion. So you can say what you want. I don't fuck with etymology because etymology was broken centuries ago. All right. No worries. Uh, thank you so much, Savage Allen. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, shout out to all the people in the live chats watching this right now. We got almost almost got 30 people in the live chat. And let's get that like, let's let's get that likes up, y'all. I see a lot of you guys on here. If you appreciate the content, press that like subscribe button real quick. Of course, appreciate for everybody having an open discussion tonight. And I do see some new guests real quick. Uh, let me get their thoughts real quick. Don't forget, I posted the public link uh, on the on the YouTube live. So if you guys want to come on and be part of be part of the conversation, whether you agree or disagree. Click on that link. You can jump on. As you can see, I just added two new guests real quick. Um, let me pass it on to this uh, un unknown person. I don't know who's this person. Malia, who? who? I don't recognize Malia. <laughs> Malia. What's up, Malia? <laughs> Thank you for dropping on tonight. What do you think? What do you think about the topic for tonight? What's up, Will? Will's always acting brand new, but everybody knows who I am in the city. Um, my name is Malia, AKA Boss Lady Baba. Um, that comment that Daniela made, that comment was for me. I was the one that posted that on IG when me and um, Hungarian Simone was going back and forth on Will's post. And I was stating that racism does exist in our, um, in our community. 
And I did state that hate is taught. I believe that hate is taught. Um, it's not, I don't think it's something natural. I think hate comes from a place of ignorance. And unless you educate yourself, you're always going to hate. Um, you're never going to know or you're never going to experience like what, what's out there. So that's um, all I got to say about that. Um, as far as the topic goes, um, sorry, I'm a little high, you guys. Um, <laughs> forgive me. But um, like I told you, well, I warned you guys I'm on vacation mode, but I, I had to take that invitation from Daniela. So, you know, I never backed down from from an invitation. But um as far as my experience, um, I kind of seen it, um, not necessarily growing up. So growing up, like I never seen race, I never seen racism um, with my parents. I never seen them um, talk about a specific um, group of people. It wasn't until um, my older siblings who were born and raised in Tonga that came out to the States. Um, it wasn't until I seen the way they, they spoke about black people um, and that's when, you know, that's when I, I experienced like racism uh, within our community. It happened at home. And um, my sister, you know, she, she said something vulgar. She pretty much said the N word. Um, that's how she identified black people. And, um, and, you know, right when she said that, you know, me and my sister who were born and raised out here, we automatically, we were shocked that she, you know, that that came out of her mouth. And we quickly um, educated her like, hey, you don't say that. Like that is, um, you know, that's one of the worst things that you could ever say. You know, you could get killed for shit like that. I'm saying it to the wrong person. Um, and so that's that's where it first began as far as like my experience. But growing up, a lot of it, um, a lot of it was colorism. A lot of it was colorism. And just like the snide, the snide remarks that older people would make about um about black people, you know, that shit made me really uncomfortable as a kid. And um, it still makes me, it still, it still boils my blood when I hear um, other Polynesian people, you know, even just making fun of, um, of black people, that shit annoys me because that, it's so ignorant, it's so stupid and we need to do better, <laughs> especially nowadays, it's, we have no excuses. Um, but growing up for me, it was colorism. And um, with me, because I was a lot more fair than, than my other cousins. I hated being um, compared to my other cousins who were darker. Or, you know, the, the other cousins who were darker, their parents would make them wear, um, wear, you know, long sleeves in fucking 100 degree weather. Or even, like, would try to make me wear that shit. And I'm like, no, what the fuck? Like, it's 100 degrees outside of the door. <laughs> I'm not wearing no fucking hoodie and sweats. Like, that's retarded. Like, who does that? Um, but just shit like that, like, it just, it, it, it just amazes me that I still see like parents who are my age or even younger, like still doing that to their, to their kids. And I, it's just stuff like that, that, <clears throat> that I think, um, you know, stuff that we're continuing, um, it's just continuing to damage our, our community. Um, but yeah, we need to do better, you guys. So um, as far as, as far as my, my stance, um, by now everyone should know, like, um, Fuck racism, and if you you know if you disagree, then uh, we're not the same. So it is what it is. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for Malia. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, let me pass it to uh, some King, man. Simone King, thank you for jumping on as a public guest. Uh, what are your thoughts about the topic? Does uh, racism exist? Go ahead, Simone King. All right. Hey, peace and love to the family. Peace and nothing but love, man. Um, I appreciate you, brother Will, for having me on here. I always come back and support you, bro, since day one. Um, but damn, god damn, let me tell you this shit. I'm fucking, I've been waiting for you to post it. I've been waiting for you to post this, man, because uh, a lot of Samoans, uh, a lot of islanders that I've come across. I'm by the way, um. I'm Samoan. I'm dominantly Samoan. I know I got some German and Irish in me, but uh, I'm from L.A. I'm from uh, Long Beach, North Side Long Beach, J-Town in the building. Uh, but, man, uh, just being brought up in the Samoan church and in, in the Samoan community, going to Flag Day in Carson every uh, born and raised every year, uh, having a booth there. Um, and then 
on top of that, having cousins that are off of me, uh, you know, off Gossi. Uh, damn, just going to church at church was actually one of the biggest times I've seen uh, a lot of Samo, a lot of my family, or a lot of Samoan people uh, be racist towards uh, my African brothers and sisters, or anyone darker than them. You know, we got these Afghasi, uh Balangi, off of uh, Balangi uh, Samoans that are very light skinned nowadays. So when they see a, a Samoan that is very dark skinned, they they tend to treat them differently. So uh, fuck, I don't agree with this shit at all. Um, I can't stand it, um, and I know where it comes from. You know. Samoan people, you're not born being racist. You're not born to be a racist. No one's born to be racist. Um, this just started back um, in Samoa when the white man came with the to Spia and he brought, you know, Robert Louis Stevenson brought the Bible over to Samoa, right? Um, while Samoans were believing in their gods, we had our own gods. But when the white man, the Palangi man, brought that shit over to our land, we actually adopted their culture. We adopted the way they believe, the way what gods they they brought to the table. Um, that's actually why Samoans and a lot of uh, us as Pacific Islanders and African Americans, I think I'm, I'm I got African in me too. I got uh, some African bloodline in me too. But I can honestly say that racism came when we adopted the the white man's culture, their beliefs, and the way they lived life. Um, we didn't. We really didn't care the color of your skin until they told us what was black, what was white, what was wrong, what was right. Um, and nowadays, you know, United States, uh, America actually uh, puts it on commercials, puts it on TV, puts it on TikTok, uh, little things here and there to actually uh, to uh, blow it up, blow racism up a little bit more uh, without us knowing. But that's that's my belief, and uh, and I go back to that. I go back to the history. Back in time to where, you know, the white man brought it to us. So we're not born to it. And I know all of us, all of us Islanders here today, I know we all experienced it. But I think that we all have to come to, in order to break it from our cycle, from our people. Oh, uh, let me shout out Sister Leah. Is it Leah or Lisa? Shout out Sister Lisa right there. She said, ain't hey, nobody got the balls yet to step up to that elder. You know, our elders our Samoan elders, our, our Tongan elders, that shit, that takes some balls to step up. And I'm starting to, I'm starting to speak the truth up a little bit more uh, despite, you know, the repercussions. But uh, I think it's, it's up to us as uh, the, the, the youngsters uh, to take advantage of what we have right now with the history books and with Google, we are able to uh, actually explore the history and actually teach our youngsters this. I teach my daughter this shit every day. I teach my kids this. I, me and my wife, we study this shit. Uh, I'm a big advocate of uh, trying to teach this peace and understanding the truth of where we come from and what we believe in. So peace and love to everybody. I'm glad to be here, and I can't wait to hear everyone's uh, perspective. Hey, shout out to hey, Savage. Peace and love, my O's, my Thoko's in the building. And shout out to Taniella, too. I met you guys already. And Sister Rose. Peace and love, y'all. No worries, no worries. Thank you so much. Man, and first of all, shout out to the panel real quick. Man, we got a packed panel. We got a packed panel tonight. Thank you so much for all the panel sharing their thoughts real quick. Let me read some a uh, couple comments. Uh, Joe Latu, this is the first time I've seen you on on the live chat. Shout out to Joe. Colorism exists. The Jesus depicted in movies, TV, and arts is white, though ge geography tells different as well as the description of him in the Bible. There's a lot to be said about that. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Joe Latu. And I know uh, Rock said. Uh, it's different. Uh, it's different though when you are half black and half poly because when you in fed, you got to choose which race to roll with. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for you guys for tuning in. Uh, but for the panel, I want to, uh, oh, uh, Black Zero, you want to say something real quick? Go ahead, Black Zero. Uh, I mean, it's probably, I, I went to jail before, not anything crazy, but uh, I I ended up being with the Samoan just because of my last name. So that, that's how they that's how they separate you, just letting you know. All right, no worries. All right, thank you for sharing that, uh, Lex, uh, Daniel. Um, yeah, to the panel, I want to move on to the to the next topic. When I want to discuss, I do want to discuss colonialism. Uh, obviously, more majority of us, all of us on this panel, we can agree that racism does exist. But obviously, you guys saw in the comments, there's a lot of Polynesians out there that truly believe that it does not exist. Um, 
And uh, and obviously, I listened to a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys mentioned colorism. A lot of you guys mentioned uh, there's a lot of things in our community that's racist. A lot of people are not aware of it. Uh, subtle racism, um, especially if you're not a Hafakasi. So uh, I and of course, a lot of people lack the historical context of where everything is. You know how our parents were taught. What did they learn these behaviors from? I think someone can get brought up. Uh, the white people's beliefs are being indoctrinated by the white by the white people and their beliefs, and that's why that's altered our way of how we judge each other. So I just want to open up the topic real quick to discuss uh, colonialism real quick. You know where did, where did this all come from? Why did why do we do this? Well, you know, I want to focus on the why. I think well, Savage, I, I love what you shared on your on your on your response on TikTok. You said the why, the how, the when, the what. You know the where uh, when I when I watched your response. So uh, I'm going to open up colonialism real quick. So for the panel, just get ready real quick. Uh, but I'm gonna start off with I, I believe uh, is our colonial colonialism expert <laughs> Savage. I want to start off with you. I know you uh, you've dedicated a uh, majority of your life for, uh, to talk about this and on your channel. So I want to start off the topic of colonialism with you, and then I'll come on to the guests real quick. So Savage, go ahead, Toko. And uh, if you can go over the, if you want to go over the five minutes real quick, you know, that's, that's fine because I know you got a lot to drop, a lot to share. But go ahead, Savage. Now I'm gonna honor I'm gonna honor the time code. You know, there are a lot of things I can drop here, but I'm gonna make sure to speak from my heart because the facts the facts can be overwhelming. So I want you to feel this, right? That's what I want to do here. I want you to feel what I'm about to say. You know, pre-colonial, right? Uh, before the 1600s, you will not you will not find anywhere indigenously you will you will find no origin of the word hate in any language. Try me, find it, because better linguistics and experts of the languages have tried better than you and have not found yet. Not in Tongan, not in Samoan, you will find it nowhere, the word hate itself. So of course it is learned behavior because 1493, the doctrine of discovery by the church, right? Before it was the Vatican, which dictates that any land uninhabited regardless if there was indigenous people, now belongs to the name of God in his church. That was what uh, the doctrine of discovery 1493 was. And so, of course, European settlers set across the world to do nothing more than just colonize. Now, the concept of colonization is three factors. Politics, industry, and last but not least, religion, right? They use the politics to break down the classes in every indigenous culture. Industry divided us in roles. And of course, religion brought in identity, who was sinful and who was not. Now, taking it from there, anybody that you know of today, besides America, of course, under the Commonwealth Act, this is gonna piss you off. For those of you who believe Tonga was never colonized, Tonga's colonized. And you can say what you want. You can get mad and you can say all the things you want to tell you, your friends and, and what, whatever I said. Make this viral. And I want you to hear from my mouth. That cross that you represent every day, you, rep, you represent that flag and you wave it around. Yeah, uh, we, we were in a time before flags. That doesn't represent us. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. And the white represents the purity. Keep that in mind whenever you say that shit. All right. Now, in the 70s, the French, the, the, the Friendship Act, between uh, Eng or the UK and Tonga expires. What happens coincidentally after that? We become a member of the Commonwealth. Now, if you're not aware of what we do in the Commonwealth, we can't speak on our own at the UN meetings. Why? Because we have to consult with our UK brothers. Anybody who will tell you different, trust me, you find a source and I will let you know if you're bullshitting. Trust me, I, I'm too well versed in this. I'm, I'm immersed in this, dog. And the only reason why I bring this up is because the pride we have today is fallacy, falsified. And so any kind of hatred we bear towards the rock wipers, right? The niggers, the wetbacks, the chinks, whatever you want to call it, right? You should really look back internally and feel that shit. Feel that shit. Because the very people we are hating on is us. Is us. Look at that fucking mirror and you tell me you teach that shit to your fucking kids. That's what colonialism is. It is not a person. It is not the color of a people. It's a fucking mindset that keeps getting perpetuated in an endless vicious cycle. And people want to sit there. Well, all white people are, 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 are colonizers. Then what the fuck are the Asians doing in the Pacific? No, you don't want to have that conversation. 
You don't want to have that conversation. You don't want to, dog, because I'll run laps around you, like I said, right? But, you know, it just simply goes back to research and studies. You find a credible source, and I will let you know how credible it actually is. Because if it ain't bias, then it ain't for us. So don't teach me about me if you ain't me. Fuck you. And I meant that shit on the ancestors. I promise that whatever I do, I do for my kids. Because that's all I'm going to leave behind. I can't take none of this shit with me. I love you guys. All right. No worries, man. Thank you for sharing that, Savage. And to the live chat, right, if you man. do... On the, the live chat, if you do find that credible source, uh, reach out to me. I'll make sure we can get a one-on-one -on -one with you and Savage, and we'll make it happen on the podcast. <laughs> All right, no worries. Shout out to everybody on there. Uh, yeah, let me uh, pass it on to the panel. Uh, what do you think about colonialism? What is, where does all this root come from? Uh, let me pass it on to uh, uh, Rokilla. Rokilla, what do you think, Rokilla? Hi. Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Yes. I took my head yep. set off. Okay, just making sure. Um, now, I'm going to piggyback off of, uh, well, no, I, I'm just going to touch real quick. I agree with Savage when he said it's a perpetuated lifestyle. Um, and I like that. If it's bias, it ain't for us. I really, really like that, Savage. Uh, now, uh, I'm going to, I want to say that when people say that it, it's something that we were taught like from the older generation when i hear that i kind of sort of agree with that um and i understand it because before tv before you know social media um living in samoa living on an island the lifestyle was you know you wake up you first it's prayer you know god it, it, you go straight to um motivate you do you do your morning song you do prayer and then everybody breaks what up year, and, you know, wait, what year was i fighting with um oh maria i think uh yeah, 2000 pandemic oh go ahead go ahead go ahead Rokilla. oh just... and uh and you know the kids they go to school the women they they run the you know they do chores the men they go to mau manga they go to the plantation um, and everybody has their chore, everybody has a routine, and that's the lifestyle back home. Um, I I think that going back to like beauty standards, just making everything simplistic and thinking just a, from a simple mindset, black is synonymous with either evil or dirty. Like it, it's, so the, when Lisa said earlier, the, how the older generation tell you, you know, if you're darker, um, you know, don't forget when you shower, scrub your, you know, scrub your skin. Like it, 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 it's synonymous with dirty. And I can say that I experienced that myself. I might look fairer now because I'm older, but when in my teenage years, I stayed outside. I stayed swimming. By the time I moved to Pongo, which was like early 2000, I was a lot darker than what I am now. And um, everybody just thought, they thought I was Fijian. Uh, nobody believed that I could understand Samoan. Uh, my first language was Samoan, believe it or not. Colonialism, I'm so sorry, y'all, I'm just... Uh, I I agree. I agree. And <laughs> okay, well, okay, I'm just gonna step in a little bit. Uh, I got you. We'll definitely come back to you. I'm sorry, uh, y'all. I just okay. I don't do well with this. Thank you. <laughs> Let me pass it on to the next person. Uh Lisa, Lisa, what do you think about colonialism? Uh do you think, Lisa? Um, I agree completely with Savage Donga. Um what you said was Amazing. That shit was fucking, I felt that shit. Um, there's nothing more I could add to this because he said everything re in regards to colonialism and how it started within. I can only speak about Tonga because I'm Tongan, um, but there has been colonialism within other islands, the Polynesian islands, uh, specifically with us and how the missionaries landed on our island, pre-colonialism. Mm -hmm. What the fuck were we thinking? We didn't know nothing about color. Mm -hmm. What did we believe in? 
that's a question. We believed in the, let's say the ocean, the, the land, the sky, we're spiritual people. Soon as the missionaries come and they, you know, they, that, that, um, the Bible, they come in with the Bible and, you know, the Bible was the weapon. That is what changed the whole thing in Tonga. That changed what we felt about the skin color, like the colorism, what happened, which is crucial because it's crazy how we think that. And it's, we come to America and you, you want to align your, your thoughts with and assimilate, and assimilate with uh, the white culture, but they don't give a fuck about us. Mm-hmm. We're nothing like them. What we're struggling right now mirrors closely to the black, our black brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. We have health disparities. We are in poverty. We are like majority of Tongan people, low wage, like low wage income. The, the increase of um, the, our people going to jail. These are things that mirror what black people have been going through. So I, I completely understand what Savage Tonga is saying. He, he, what he said, I can't say it more eloquently. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely where I'm at right there. All right, no worries. Appreciate you, Lisa. Thank you for sharing. I'll pass it on to uh, Rose. Rose, what do you think, Rose? Colonialism. Oh, I think, Rose, I think you're freezing right now. Uh, I'll come back to you, Rose. I'll pass it on to you. Uh, to you, uh, Black Zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Black Zero. Uh, Tui, Tui, go ahead, Tui. And I'll come back to you, Black Zero. Tui, go ahead, Tui. Oh, Tui is on the black screen. <laughs> I'll pass on to you, Black Zero. Do your thing, Black Zero. Do your thing, Black Zero. Yeah, I love being third choice. No, I'm just kidding. He's back. Let him go. All right, go ahead, Tui. Go ahead, Tui. What was your question? I'm so sorry. I got lost in it, what everyone was saying. Oh, but we just talked about the historical context and the roots of uh, everything coming from, uh, that's why we brought up colonialism. So what are your thoughts about colonialism? What are my thoughts about it? <laughs> no, hold, on, hold on, let me, let me gather my thoughts on this entire broad question you just asked. Oh shit. Back to you, Tui. We'll come back to you. Uh, oh, go ahead. Please. All right, I'll go. Yeah. All right, so um, I grew up in a very religious household. My dad and my mom, I guess for their first seven years of marriage, didn't have such a great one until they found Jesus. And then all of a sudden, my whole life was about God and Jesus. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I was the good little Jesus soldier for a very long time. I also, when it came, and this is, this is what I found out later in life, because I was a Christian was also the reason why I was a conservative, which is, that's, that's a problem in itself. Now, growing up with a very strict Samoan dad who believed in feows, waking up at six and doing all this other stuff, and then on top of that, really hardcore Jesus freak, it put a, a, a I wasn't allowed to grow up the same way anybody else was allowed to grow up. I, I wasn't allowed to do certain things. I wasn't allowed to go spend that at everybody's houses. Like I, I, there was just certain things. And this was the nineties. I was only allowed to be outside or reading the Bible. There was no TV, nothing like that. Like only like sneaking off doing this. But if we well, had to write book reports on the Bible, like I can tell you, I am a theologian. I'm so good because that's just what they beat into us. And the, as I got older and started realizing there that there are really big holes in the stories in the Bible and a lot of this stuff didn't even exist, it put me into like kind of a spiral. I didn't know who I was for a very long time. And it like and I don't want to get too like sappy on here, but I felt lost. I felt lost. I felt like something was taken from me. But I also felt free at the same time. I didn't feel like I was going to hell every five seconds. I didn't feel like I needed to portray a certain type of person that I wasn't. I was able to like the things I liked without worrying if it was going to offend a God that I've never met before or that hasn't done anything for me. And then when I started actually going back to college and learning new things and reading history books and learning psychology and reading this book right here, this is a weird book. I'm learning... It's dance. It's it's literally about dance and cultural diversity. 
and I'm reading it and I'm learning so much about so many different cultures. But the constant thing about each and every one of these cultures that I'm learning about is they all got fucked by Christianity. There's always a chapter that halfway through the chapter it goes, oh, here's the fucking Europeans. And then they lose all of their motherfucking culture. They have to start inventing shit to stay together. It's insane. The Native Americans, there's like four different classifications for Native Americans, but no, and it's by timeline. And the reason why it goes by timeline, because it goes, oh, these are the people who, who were not colonized. Boom, these are the people who were colonized. And these are how their culture is different so much. And they lost so much. And then I get to our chapter. And that shit fucking hurts. Like, we we believed in something called uh, Annette, Annette Enemism. Anem- sorry, I have dys- dyslexia. I'm not a, the very best reader, but basically, it believe. Sorry, go ahead. It's called animism. There you go. Basically, we believed that everything had a spirit, that everything had its own life force, and we respected every single thing. We respected every rock that got moved. We respected every wave that crashed on the sand. We respected everything we killed to eat, and to me. Us losing that is when we started diverging into this, well, who we are now. And I don't think that who we are now is bad, but I think the problem start is when we hold on to that colonialism, that's what you're talking about. Just like the Native Americans, just like the African Americans, except for they got slavery, they got the worst. All right, I don't want to say African Americans, blacks. Like, I'm black, I'm half black, you know, and it sucks that I have to differentiate myself when I'm talking to a white person. Then they look at me and they ask me, what are you? If they don't look at my ID, I'm automatically black. But if they look at my ID, I'm automatically Samoan. But in actuality, I'm both. And as much as I would love to go a deep dive into the, the history and, oh, the Polynesian belief system is one of man's oldest Dating back to the Polynesian age, like, sorry, the, the uh, Paleolithic age, basically fucking ty- dinosaur age. Like, I, I don't, I don't understand why, it, it, now, so now that shit's lost, gone forever. And that's, that's what, how I feel. Anytime I hear somebody thanking fucking white Jesus, anytime I see a motherfucking white dude with long hair on somebody's fucking altar, like, I lose my motherfucking mind. I do. And you know what? It sucks because when it comes to speaking truth to authority or speaking truth to my family, I have to have those conversations with them because they will not. They will not teach my children that some fucking white dude in a robe is going to save them, telling them to stop fighting, telling them to turn the other goddamn cheek. No, fuck that shit. Fight back. And that's all I got to say. I'm right, moving on, guys. <laughs> all right, Black Zero. God, no! All right, man. Black Zero, thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, I think Brown Girl with the Islands had a question to you. Uh, he said, uh, why is this guy screaming? Uh, that's his passion. That's passion, my folks. That's not screaming. I'm speaking with passion. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I see, uh, my bad, bro. <laughs> no, you're good, bro. The, the reason why you're screaming is because you that's experience. You dealt with yeah, that facts. shit. So for the person to ask that stupid ass question, I would ask you this. Why does your mom scream at night? Because I'm there. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I'll pass it on to uh, right. uh, Blazer Cooks, Cooks real quick. Uh, shout out to Blazer Cooks. Uh, first time on the channel. Uh, Blazer Cooks shared, I was with my boyfriend for a few months and I met his Tongan parents. His stepmom kept telling him how he knows He's supposed to keep it in the bloodline, and he's not supposed to date Uli Uli. All right, if you don't know, Uli Uli means black uh, in uh, Tongan. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And I think uh, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think I'm just trying to see if any more people in the live chat. Appreciate. Hey, I want to shout out everybody in the live chat, speaking your thoughts, I was sharing everything, everything that you guys have to say. Appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pass it on for you guys. The next part, uh, uh, next people on the panel. Um, Tui, we'll come back to you, Tui. Tui, did you uh, had? What did you want to add on to the uh, uh, colonialism subject? Um, I wasn't sure if I should shout or not, but I'm just going to talk at a regular, <laughs> uh, regular tone. Um, 
Yep. So, I mean, colonizers implemented their own systems of governance, land management, trade, and all that shit. Places like Polynesia, you know, islands of Polynesia, realistically, if we weren't if we weren't colonized by one group, by one country, it would have been another. It would have been, like for Hawaii, I'm just going to speak on Hawaii because that's where I'm from. In Hawaii, if it, wa if it wasn't Europeans, if it wasn't the British, it would have been the Asians. It would have been China, it would have been Japan, it would have been one of them. And although I do, I do oppose the colonization of my people, of our people, it is necessary because in order to, for in order for people to in, in order for people to progress we do need to be colonized do i think that our entire culture should be wiped out because of it no there there would have been a, a better way obviously a greater way to do this but it it didn't happen that way we didn't have the numbers we didn't have the strength not then but we do now and i i, I enjoy that everyone is bringing up their experience I enjoy that we're calling out all of these things that are wrong with our with our community within our community but essentially these are all just words i don't believe in words i believe in action i'd like to know more about what what you all want to do in regards to smashing this shit. i see this all the time you see it every day if you guys have ever been to hawaii if you ever been to the west side of oahu it's terrible it's fucking terrible here we still live in Hawaii. We, we live in a beautiful island paradise that is ours that I'm seeing disappearing. There are 5,000 Polynesian people who disappear from Hawaii every year in replacement of European, Asian, and American, and people who are not of Polynesian descent who are moving here every year. And 5,000 may not seem like a lot to, to people who are born, are born and raised in the mainland, but here in Hawaii, it is a lot. So fuck colonialism. I hate that shit, but it is necessary. I just wish that there would have been a better way to do it. I'm sharing a tweet. Um, pass on to, uh, pass it to Rose. 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 Oh, Rose, I think you froze again. Um, I'm going to pass it on to... Uh, yeah, I get here now, Rose. Go ahead. Yeah, good. Okay. I, I wanted to... Um, Tui... I agree with her on on that. Um, it sucks, but it's necessary. And I'm going to give you an example. So in Samoa right now, obviously we know that Chinese and Indian are coming in and they're running the shit. Why? It's because Samoans are lazy. They don't want to work. Why do they not want to work? Yes, that part though. Hour. That part though. A dollar an hour, so they get more money by asking their family to spend two hundred. That pays everything for the whole month and then they go and uh, play sports and the old people are tired of it it's a really big issue going on in samoa over 250 million dollars sent to samoa and you're telling me that everyone is still broke that people still don't have water i mean i i work with my sis george who found she's um the founder of brown girl whoa and she does so much humanitarian work out there and i'm working with her on the water tank project to try to bring water to people who don't have it people think oh you live in the islands there's water everywhere no there's no you live inland there's poverty going reach out to our people we need to know what's going on i've never been to samoa I have a house out there since it's been locked down i haven't been able to go but i want to go i want to go and i want to see what's happening i want to see how things can change because if this does, if we don't do something about it, then of course the Asians and the Indians are going to take over because they're all about. Hey, Rose, hey, Rose, and Rose, 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 I'm sorry to cut you off a little bit, but your camera's going in and out. I know you're, you're sharing some facts right now, but it's gonna, we won't be, you know, we won't be get the good quality if we can't hear you. So if you can uh, work on that a little bit, I'll definitely come back to you. But I want to make sure you, you have good quality so people can listen. But your camera is going in and, in and out right now when you were speaking. So I'll definitely come back right. to you. Save that thought because you're dropping some facts right there. I do want to address that. I'll definitely come back to you, Rose. Um, Malia, I know you wanted to jump on. Go ahead, Malia. So I just wanted to follow up on what Savage was saying. So true story, guys. So oh, um, excuse uh, me. Uh, don't be rude. But anyways. 
Uh, true story. Back in 2018, um, uh, they I think it, I think that was the year wow. when the prince and the um, the prince and the princess. Uh, what's what's her name? Megan and fucking yeah. I don't even really I don't really know, but um, the queen's uh, grandson and um, his wife. They went to Tonga and proud of Megan and Harry. I'm sorry. Megan and Harry. Oh yeah, there you go, there you go. But yeah, anyways, so they went to Tonga. I think it was back in 2018, and Proud of Tongan that page um, actually posted about it. And I remember I made like a slick remark, and I was like, "Oh, why are you guys um, oh, praising?" Wow. I was like, "Why are you guys praising um, your colonizers?" And um, and I got so much shit for that, you guys. Like I was literally arguing with like a hundred people, going back and forth. And um, and Savage got it. Savage pretty much hit the nail on that one. Um, and my point, my point is like when it comes to um, colonizing Thong, I think um, the biggest part for me was um, was Christianity. And um, Black Zero was uh, talking about like Christianity and like feeling lost and shit. Like for real, that shit does happen. And let me tell you guys, like. Um, that's probably like one of the darkest times of my life is like trying to figure out like what religion fits for me. And like, I even took it as far, like, um, you know, even though I, I don't really believe in religion, like I always um, have love for uh, the LDS church because, um, because, you know, a lot of their members and their fellowshipping, it did help me a lot, especially um, with my sobriety. But let me tell you guys, um, I made it to the temple. I made it there and I still didn't, get that like fulfillment from it so i'm sorry to say but the church is not true you know? <laughs> it's a good organization straight up but um but you know um i don't believe in religion if 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 that's what makes you become a better person or if that's what's making you hold on then by all means go for it but if you're feeling lost like don't be afraid to explore um, different spirituality out there um like just being free from Christianity, like, um, it, I, I, I feel like that's probably uh, the main thing that made me, like, really fearless, like, and it made me um, take accountability for, for everything. Uh, so it's like, oh, it's, I can't blame, like, oh, you know, God got me. Um, Jesus got me. So it's okay. I can, I can let myself go. I can get sick. Jesus got me. Like, I can't do that. Um, I, you can only save yourself. And I think that's a mentality right. that we need to start that's teaching true. ourselves. So sorry, you guys, if I went over the time, but yeah, that's it. Uh, no worries. Shit. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Malia. And uh, run it up, man. You want to jump on it? You're always free. Just want to throw it out there. <laughs> I was free to jump on <laughs> and at all. I'm um, mine. Straight up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Daniela, man. That's that's you, Daniela. Uh, Daniela, what do you think, Daniela? Colonialism. Yeah. Man, how do you follow up? So everything the panel's shared in terms of history and... Uh, Is this Mike Lowe? Of events. <laughs> like, I, I, I completely agree. Like, that should happen. But in terms of disagree or agree, I don't go to either side. I accept it happened. It happened to my people. But I also know the history of my own genealogy through the Duitonga dynasty. They were a colony throughout the Pacific, which their reign went as far as the Sol Solomon Islands. And those weren't, um, you know, those weren't achievements that they did through Talanoas and cover session. No, they went over there, fucked shit up, bent those people to their will, and then integrated themselves into those, um, in the, into those islands. That's where the law of uh, Maria Toa comes from, from Amor. They were like, fuck this shit. You know, we want to own our own shit and the Tui Manua will not stand up for our people, so we'll do it. So in terms of colonialism, I don't think it's a white, it's a white specific thing. Because if you look at how the European were inspired, you have to go as far as Mongolians, who were the inventor of technology that the white man used to colonize pretty much majority of the globe as we know it. So in terms of colonialism, yeah, I fucking agree with everyone with facts and whatever the timeline is. But in terms of barriers and shit like blaming a specific race, 
I don't wholeheartedly agree that the white man's in fault because if we look at it from the perspective as a whole, we have to look at technology and who was in possession of those technologies, right? Who were the inventors of those technologies that allowed a certain race to be the ultimate colonizers? So uh, in terms of that agreement, I agree to the timeline. I don't agree that we blame one certain race for everything that's happened. They just happen to be in possession of the the most uh, superior power. So that right. that's my All take. Right. All right, thank you for sharing that, Daniela. Appreciate that. Uh, pass it on to you, Simone King, man. What do you uh, What do you think, Mr. Simone King? Go ahead. Let me unmute this real quick. Peace, man. That's just crazy. Um, damn, just hearing everybody's uh, perspective um, and their thoughts on this shit. Uh, it's just crazy how we all thinking. Um, just to, if we all just really think about it, literally, if we all can just go back in time uh, or just pick up a book or try to get some type of information. We have we have Google so we can actually find out um, some type of history uh, lesson for us to uh, to basically tap into in order for us to get an understanding of where we're at today on why our people are the way they are. Um, not just us, our people, but um, America, period. You know, what are we dealing with here in America? Uh, we're trying to get, uh, we're trying to, what, get to the American dream, have the American dream, have millions of dollars, uh, have so much money. Um, but if we really just take a step back um, and just look into what the United States actually uh, created you know this is a this is a business you know the on top of this you know the united states is a corporation on top of that this is this is what gets me going uh shit like this like something called the secure party creditor um shit like uh uh getting um um uh, getting um a lean ownership over your getting your title uh being the authorized representative of your name uh, shit like called the straw man. This shit is the type of shit that we really uh, oh, or the the second constitution. You know, there, I, I'm pretty sure that has any of y'all heard of the second constitution. We have two constitutions. We have one for the citizens, one for the people, and then we got one for the indigenous. Um, that's why they created the United Nations. They created the United Nations for, for tribes and uh, aboriginals in order to conduct themselves. Um, and operate in America. So this is the type of shit that we are, um, that us at researchers, we look, see, we all don't believe in this Christ shit no more. Um, already went past that. I'm over that. But now we going to actually try to uh, focus on how to actually take our lives back. Uh, if you're born in the United States, from my research, you're considered uh, a corporation. The United States, this is how they have power over you. This is why a lot of us like to walk around the streets and use your, your you, we like to use that. Uh, you guys know the difference between a driver and a traveler, according to the Constitution. So the Constitution says we have a right to travel. But when we sign up for a driver's license in the at the DMV, we give up our right to travel for a privilege to drive. So we basically giving up our rights. So this is the type of shit that we actually have to uh, look into because we have been stripped. We have been stripped from all of our rights. Once we contracted into the corporation, which is which owns Samoa or has a has something in Tonga. Uh, but the fact that we we here today in America, we still over here fighting over bullshit, red and blue. We fighting over black and white, but still everyone's a victim. Even the white man's a victim. So this is this is where I'm over the the racist shit. Yeah, we yeah, racism does racism does uh do exist, but we are fighting a bigger battle than what we really think uh what's really going on here in America. So that's 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 just my opinion. Uh, and that's what I've been researching. So and there's many ways to skin a cat. There's so many ways to operate in a corporate fiction. It's a fictitious entity. You know, your name in all capital letters is a fictitious entity. It's a corporation. So when you get a check or a bill in the, in the mail, 
with your name on it in all capital letters, um, that's considered a corporation. Only corporations are in all caps, but we we write our name in upper, lower, lowercase. So shit like that. So this type of shit that we have to really look at to look into in order to operate in, in our world. But thank you so much, Queen. I was um pretty sure for sharing that. I'm just gonna drop in real quick. I got just for the sake hey, of time. Tap in if y'all want to chop it up. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for you sharing that. Okay. Uh I see I'm, I'm gonna read some comments real quick. Uh American Road said America is a free world. Uh, it could be worse under a military dictatorship. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, Underground Road. Always appreciate you being on here. Uh, Bobino73, first time to see you on the live chat, man. Uh, you said that uh, it's rich against poor anyways. Thank you so much seeing you on the live chat. Thank you for being here for the first time. Shout out to you. And, uh, of course, uh, everybody here on the live chat, appreciate you guys real quick. Um, but I know Black Zero, I know you said, you mentioned that you disagree on some things real quick. I want to give you some time real quick. And also on the panel, if you did disagree on some things, let me know on the, on the private chat so I'll come to you. But go ahead, Black Zero, I know you said you disagree on some of the points that uh, some of the panelists uh, did make. Uh, go ahead, Black Zero, do your thing. Yeah, um, like back before we any of us were Samoans and Tongans or anything like that, back before we even met, any type of white person or even white people even existed we went like I, I mentioned this earlier before we we got on live but we went from island to island they were already indigenous people there we didn't subjugate them we didn't treat them like shit we didn't colonize them we immersed as one culture in those islands I'm not saying that eventually we would not have been colonized or whatever what I'm saying is, is that colonization is wrong and to say and to make excuses like oh we made better advancements did we did we make better advancements because last time i checked we're still we're still finding shit that we have no idea how it works <laughs> and, you know what i mean like so to me i don't think i don't think we would have gotten the internet faster if we weren't colonized but i do think that people live longer were happier weren't having mental mental issues like weren't killing each other with assault rifles everybody was dancing around naked you know what i mean like people were happier i don't like the idea that just because somebody else with a different culture came in here made us better they did i don't i personally i don't feel like they made us better through slavery i don't feel like they made us better through colonization i feel like they made us kind of weaker they separated us we're fighting over color we're, we're fighting over who's Tongan, who's Samoan, who's black, who's white. And all of that came out of colonization, which ultimately colonization is how they separate us is through they, they take away all of our all, all of the stuff that we believe and they inject inject us with that whole Christ shit. And, yeah, we can all try and limit the impact of what that did to us. But I still want to bring it back to that because that is what keeps us trapped. That is what people are. We're still fighting our, our literally one generation. My dad is one generation, and he's still in a cult. Christianity is a cult, people. Sorry. Not sorry. And to me, I feel like this whole I, – I don't like the idea. Uh, did you guys know that before we got here and started building brick and, and mortar and houses, like houses were built on top of, river, ri on top of rivers so they would be cooled and heated through, all through the seasons? The Native Americans did that shit. The, you know, in Africa, some some countries, uh, some people still do that. That is a way better way of how we build houses today. So how are we better? That's why I don't understand. Yeah, we have the internet. Yeah, you can look at nudes really quickly, but it doesn't make you happy. We are a society of broken, obese, fucked up, soulless people. How are we better? And don't say, oh, we colonized this, we colonized that. We started doing that shit after we met the white man. We started doing that shit after, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, that's that's all I got to say. I, I just wanted to ask those questions. All right, no worries. Thank you, Daniel. And Daniel, man, I, I, that's why I was pretty much trying to stay on TikTok, man. A lot of people out there obese, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, no worries. I wanted, uh, to, bring, I wanted to bring that in because I didn't get to make a video about it to, to back you up. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that I stand with that, you know. 
you know what? Just keeping it real with people out there. Thank you for sharing that, Daniel. I know Tui said he wanted to respond. Go ahead, Tui. Okay, so aside from the uh, fat Bible thumping fucks that you see on TikTok, um, I should I should probably I had a, I've had a really hard time articulating myself the last couple months because everything has been fucking crazy. So I'm, colonization is inevitable. It's inevitable for places like Samoa, for places like Tonga, for places like Hawaii, for places like Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia, all over. It's inevitable. That's what I should have said. Okay, all right, no worries. Uh, it's inevitable. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Tui, uh, did anybody wanna add on uh, to what everybody said? Anybody? Oh, go ahead, Rose, go ahead, do your thing. Go ahead, Rose. Uh, you're mute, you're mute. All right, we'll definitely come back. Um, anybody, all right, all right, we're definitely gonna move on. Um, move on to the next uh, next topic. And one thing I do want to open up real quick for the panel. Uh, one of the things I did I, I did see that was uh, going on uh, the discussion that was on TikTok. Uh, I don't want to bring up this question to you guys because I want to hear you guys what you guys think. They were talking about, uh, especially the people that were. Um, who didn't believe that racism that does not exist. They were talking about, you know, it's not racism, it's just colorism. So I want to do, I do want to bring up the topic of colorism. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it a difference of color? Is, is that different from racism or is that still the same thing? Uh, because obviously you guys mentioned, especially the Hapagasi panel uh, guest on my panel, he said that there's a lot of things that they treated you differently because of color. And for a lot of Polynesians out there, they were, you know, when I saw on TikTok on their comments, they were like, no, that's not racism, that's just colorism. It's okay if you want to stay within our culture. It's okay to tell our kids, "Hey, you stay out the sun," because we don't want you to get darker. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of them, were just saying that it's it's not racist to say that or to do that. So I just want to bring up that topic for you guys. What do you think about colorism? Is this is it is it that a whole different is that a different thing from racism or is that the same thing, but just in a different way? Um, I bring it up to you, uh, Rokilla. What do you think, Rokilla, when it comes to colorism? Hey, Will, sorry, can you drop the link in the chat one more time? I got people on TikTok who want to jump on. It's pinned. It's pinned, it's pinned to the top of the screen. So if you're watching this right now uh, and you want to jump on, it's pinned on the top of the screen. And all you got to do is look yeah. on the top of the live chat on YouTube. You click on it, you can jump on. Yeah, it's pinned to the top of the screen. And Will Nakuzi's cash app is Savage Island. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Rokila, yeah. Uh, talk about it, yeah. Uh, but what, what do you think about colorism? I want to apologize because I was trying to be slick early on colonialism. I dropped the whole. Oh, I'm. I was dark. Two different. Um, two different topics. But um, colorism it does exist. Uh, like I said earlier, I think. Um, like for my experience, uh, I have an I have an older sister, full Samoan. Um. We both we were both raised together. Our great uncle raised us, and he was married to a Palangi woman. She was British. Um, I I was told I couldn't sit on the couch, you know, just because it wasn't because oh no, I I just couldn't sit on the couch. Um, I had to sit on the floor. Uh, there was one time I was eight, and I called her my mom because she was raising me, and that you know. Uh, I just remember eating one time and she took her fork and, and, and I just was mistreated. Diff I was treated differently, but back to colorism in some, I was going off. I had to re redirect myself. I'm so sorry. y'all. Um, I think that dark is synonymous with dirty. It is you. If anybody's darker, you're already treated differently in any culture. Um, Chinese, you know, everywhere else. And I think a lot of that has to do with media, beauty standards. Um, the fairer you are, the, the, the prettier you, you are looked at. I just, I just feel like that. I do better following up after other people. And I should have said that beforehand. I don't like being first to talk and put on the spot only because um i'm new and, and everybody else has, has had a topic but i'm that's what i want to say for now but i will come back i promise you i'll come back and i'll i'll speak more on it 
Okay. Is that okay? Thank you. Sorry, y'all. Just, Thank you. No worries. Yeah, just, just be yourself. Just be yourself, Rokila. No pressure. Just be yourself. Um, I'll pass it on to you, uh, Alisa. Uh, are you on right now, Alisa? Nope. Okay, cool. I'll pass it to you, Black Zero. Black Zero, um, what do you think about colorism? You know, uh, is that different or is that the same thing as racism, just a different form? Well, <clears throat> that that's a little... For me, I was when it comes to colorism, I was hated on by more black, like darker black dudes than anybody else. Um, yeah. Like <laughs> I was really hated on. But like, anytime I went to when I was in Iraq, I got super freaking dark. Like when I go to v Vegas, I get super dark. But most of the time, I'm this color unless I'm outside or in a different area. So I grew I grew up this color, the exact same, you know. Um, and I I got I got the snide remarks. And from a Samoan that my grandfather's darker than I am and he's full Samoan, like straight from the island, born and raised, you know, the Matai, everything. And he, he even, he even looks at me and, and kind of was like, if you're a black guy, you're supposed to be dark. And if you're a Samoan guy, you're supposed to be this color. You're mixed. You're supposed to be dark like me kind of thing, you know? So it was kind of weird because we're men. So we didn't get hated on. We got hated on by other men that were darker than us. And it was a little weird because they'd make snide remarks and it was like jokingly. But now that I'm older, I realized that it wasn't jokes. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't know if it was racism because my dad would accidentally slip up and say something actually racist. And it wasn't his fault because he honestly, my dad is a huge fob. So he just repeats what he says. And I, I don't want to like take the responsibility off of him. But when I, we explain it to him, he doesn't get defi – well, when he was younger, he got defensive. But nowadays, if he says something and we – hey, dad, you can't say that. It's pretty you know, insensitive. He's like, oh, I'm sorry because he gets the plight now. When I was younger, he didn't see us as black. It, it was weird. Now that I've gotten older and gotten a little bit more vocal with everything and my brothers my, – my brother uh, – my middle brother and is like – he looks more black than I do. And he uh, he's more of a – you know – he was he was more of an outspoken person than I was. I was more of the hey dad, I'm gonna do. I'm the oldest son. That's that, that just tells you there. I'm the oldest son. I was the guy you go to when you want something done because I wanted to be Fasa Moa. I'm Stella Panga. I do what I'm told. I I you know I love God. I worship my family. So anything all of that stuff that was happening, it, even though it offended me, I didn't say shit. I didn't. And now I'm saying more stuff, and I'm choosing my battles. And I wish I, I, I honestly, I wish I was a little stronger because all I want Hello. is a better relationship with my Poly, my Polynesian family because the black side is dying off really, really quickly. So the older generation is almost all gone. So I want that re, that relationship with them. So I'm trying to teach them without them cutting me off completely and be like, you know, oh that guy. So I I I agree that there is. I just don't know what the level between racism and colorism is. And that's because the darker people have been more coloristic, I guess, towards me. So I, I'm not 100% sure. It's the same thing. I, it feels like the same thing, honestly. <laughs> to me, it does. <laughs> same shit, bro. Same shit. Like colorism, same shit. the only way you fucking you even sure? determining the difference between black and blue is if you have colorisms. The fuck? I mean, damn, in uh -huh. Samoa, if we go back, Tonga in Samoa and every island, we were all dominantly black, dark skinned with afros until the yeah. white man came. And guess what? Our hair started to get what? A little thinner. Our skin mm -hmm. got a little wider. Right. Common sense. Like shit. We everyone just went through the same shit. They colonized everywhere. They took over places where people were already already there. We already, uh, there was people here. They talk about the indigenous aboriginals that were here in America before uh, Christopher Columbus and everyone showed up. Everyone had afros. There was a bunch of dark-skinned, melatonin, melanated people here, chilling. They already populated for thousands and millions of years until who came? Who came? The, the blue eye, the straight hair came and tried to trade up. And guess what happened? They start popul They start. They start getting down. They start populating. They start migrating. And guess what happened? We all started getting fairer skin. That's why a lot of Samoans are what 
part German. That's why Samoans weren't that big as giants. Look at the the Palangi, the corn. Hey, think about it. The corn fed, the corn fed boys from Mississippi, from Alabama. Those big boys, those big country fed boys, the Palangi boys that are big boned, that look like Samoan, but they're just bright as hell. Look like a poa, look like a pig. Same shit. We in we inbred it. We we already we we already took the the dark skinned African. Samoans, which we I think we we migrated from Africa. Uh, we migrated from uh, Papua New Guinea. If you actually look back, if you go with the Papua New Guinea, I think Samoans are the, the closest thing to uh, our Papua New Guineans yes. are our closest things to Samoans and Tongans. Uh, the last people that are connected closest to uh, Asia, Africa. I mean, in that in that region, if you just look back, they found we already we did some homework. There's pottery found, same pottery. Uh, we traveled across the ocean, okay. shit like that. But they, they colonized us, and they colonized okay. every okay. single part of this continent or this what world. That's, thank, that's you, thank you, uh, thank you, Simone King. Uh, let me just step in real quick. Yes, appreciate sir. sharing that, brother. Um, yeah, I'll pass it on to you, Alisa. Lisa, what do you think about colorism? Uh, and then, uh, and then everybody that's on right now on the waiting room, if you come on and click on the public link, you have to wait in the waiting room, and I add you on and turn your camera on. Just to let you guys know, I'm, I'm not going to add you immediately. But you have to just wait there until I add you on. Just shout out for everybody on the waiting room right now. But go ahead, Lisa. Do your thing, Lisa. But it, can you bring up the topic of colorism? Is it different or is it the same thing? Oh, yeah, they're definitely the same thing. What we're not going to do is make excuses for the older generation or for people that you say that don't know better because they sure as hell didn't give a fuck when they were saying these uh, derogatory things to you. Right. So why should we give a fuck? And I understand it's because, you know, in our culture, it's always to respect our elders. And so we 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 struggle with this dynamic of respecting our elders and then trying to speak up. I understand that. I struggled with that my whole fucking life until I got to a point where I started educating myself. Mm. And then it was like, fuck that. I'm about to tell you how it is, especially when you. Um, are you've assimilated with the American culture and then you understand the history of American culture. But for sure, right. colorism stems from racism, without a doubt, especially when you're um, when you're trying to like divide people in regards to the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. And you try to make feel pe make people feel inferior because their skin is darker. Mm -hmm. And you try to make people who are probably half cast or lighter skin make them feel like they're more beautiful than those of uh, those other people who are darker. So for sure, it, it stems from racism and uh, colorism. It's more magnified in Polynesian culture, way more magnified. But it, it just it, it's it's a fucked up situation because damn, like the lighter you are, you're more beautiful. The darker you are, they it's like what. Um, Roe Killer said it's synonymous to dirt or dirty or inferiority. That's just bullshit. So for sure, yeah, they it, it stems for it's the same thing. All right, no worries. Thank you for sharing that, Lita. Um, I'll pass it on to you, uh, uh, Rose. Rose, what do you think about colorism and racism? Is it different or is it the same? Go ahead. I feel like it's different, so racism is being discriminatory against different groups, whereas colorism is being discriminatory, discriminatory against darker skin. And basically, if you just look at Asian society as a whole, it was all, it all started from social status, right? So the lighter your skin, especially for women, and this really had to do with just women, you were considered of high class education, leisure, because they consider people of darker color to be working outside. And so that's how they looked at it. Oh, you're dark skin. You're, you're living, working outside. You're, you're, you're poor. So it was all about classism. Um, hey, Rose, you're doing it. I'm sorry, Rose, man. I just have to cut you a step in. You do it. It's happening again. I, I, so we, it's, uh, the video is cutting. Now, the audio on the video is, is cutting out. It's cutting out. It's cutting out. <laughs> it was good. It was good. It was good for the first minute, but now it's it's dropping off. I'll come back to you because I just want to make sure that your message gets said and don't want to be interrupted by the, the, the low party. Um, thank you, Shane. Um, let me pass on to Ellis. Savage, Savage, what do you think about colorism? 
it's the fucking same because too many of us are focusing on the definition way mm -hmm. too much. You're not focusing on your senses. Can you smell? Can you see? Can you taste, hear, and touch? Right? Yeah. Experience would tell you otherwise mm -hmm. that if colorism is this and racism is that, ask the kid how they feel about it. You're dumb as fuck. You fucking idiot. I should smack the fucking taste out your mouth. Are you that stupid? You really teaching that shit to your fucking kids? Are you teaching that? No, no, no. The same way a white boy would call you or say some shit. What's up, my nigga? Yeah, you'd get heated. Right? It's the same way as if they joked around and was like, oh, check out these wetbacks over here. Let's go pick them up at Home Depot. Right? Nah, that don't got nothing to do with definition. That got everything to do with in the moment of, of the situation. Feel that shit. Tell me what colorism is, and I'll show you what that feel like. The first time I ever got called the N-word, I was confused. Lack of context. Because I didn't know if I was black or a Pacific Islander or Polynesian at the time. I just grew up in the fucking hood. Streetlights were indication, get your ass home. Right? When you played with the neighborhood kids, there was no difference. There was no diversity. Your mom could whip my ass, and my mom could touch you too. Right? One fucking try. Don't come at me talking about this. Because the only people who can answer, oh, colorism and racism are different, are motherfuckers who believe they're middle class or high class living. Dumb fuck, if you ain't making more than 30000 a year, shut the fuck up. You're going through gentrification just like me. That's it. So don't get up here talking all that good shit if you ain't living that good shit. My kids, let me tell you something. For the longest time, I hated white people. I fucking hated white people mm. until I had a niece who's half white. And then I understood I can't blame this fucking kid, but I can do this. I can teach her. And with that, I kind of buried a seed of love within my heart. As corny as that fucking sounds, I'm experiencing that. So the solution would be to me, teach the fucking kids. We can't reach everybody. We can't. But I know this for sure. If I can start at home, I have a hope that they reach and teach someone else. So if you dumb enough to be a minority, a person of color, black or otherwise, come up and say colorism and racism is different, suck my dark ass dick. And that's on the ancestors. I promise that. <laughs> Bitch. Motherfucker. All right. God. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, damn, <Savage. laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing that, Savage. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you. As a new guest, let's just finish with the last uh, uh, panel, and I'll come to you, Lonnie and JT Moala. Thank you for being patient. Shout out to you guys real quick. Daniela. Go ahead, Daniela. What do you think? Hey. Colorism. You gotta let me get in front of Savage, man. I can't follow up after Savage. <laughs> um, I agree and, and with Savage in the sense of I hate semantics. I fucking hate semantics. It, with racism and colorism, it's all the same shit. It, it, it's rooted from the same ideologies, right? So whether it exists and we justify it in certain different cases, no. It's the same for me. Um, there is another conversation that could be had in terms of barriers and whatnot, but I agree with Savage. You know, we, we use these different terms and we cut them up, chop them up in, in different sort of uh, different languages, trying to be specific to one thing or not, but it's all the same. It's all the same. So, but yeah, you've got to let me go in front of Savage. I can't follow up with that, with, with, with that energy, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, no worries, Donna. Daniela. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, you said, um, uh, I know you've been quiet lately, <laughs> but I want to give you some time to add on <laughs> to add on to add on to our conversation. Uh, what do you what do you think? If you want to jump on real quick before I pass it to the uh, public guests that's jumping on right now, go ahead, Mr. Coconut. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I have no fucking knowledge of this shit whatsoever. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> like, guys, look, look, listen, 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 look, look. 
I'm a <clears throat> I'm a content creator. I'm not a philosophizer here. <laughs> My low philosophizer. <laughs> I Listen, can't do that shit. I, I, I wanna I do wanna say something that I am not afraid to go after motherfucking Savage because I will kick his candy ass. Whoa, 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 whoa calm down. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, seriously. <laughs> One thing that I really hate about the English language is that we have so many words for one thing. Colorism is discrimination. I understand that some of you have personal experiences with it and I, I, I respect that. I understand and I'm glad that you're sharing them. But as as far as a society, a society uh, it's discrimination. Mm -hmm. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and I just learned a new word today, philosophizer. Thank you, uh, shout out to Izera. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the fob dictionary uh, <laughs> all right thank you so much for sharing that i'll do some some, some new people in the live chat i see uh uh let me present that real quick uh three for the fifth media thank you for your transparency we are here to learn shout out to you for the first time uh thank you for being on the live chat always appreciate, always appreciate you guys on the live chat for the first time thank you so much for everybody watching and i see uh walla Walla 101, uh, 100, stop the aggressive. You're not like that. 100, <laughs> laugh emoji. Shout out to you. Thank you for being on here for the first time. Uh, like I said, whether you guys disagree or disagree, we're just here to have an open conversation. But gonna, I do have some new guests that just jumped on. Shout out to the newest guests, uh, JT, JT, Martin, and Lonnie. I want to give you guys some time to jump on. I'll start with you, uh, JT, Walla. I know you jumped on for the first time. Go yeah. ahead. And, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you think? What do you want to tell? What do you want to add on to the conversation? Go ahead. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the normal conversation between me, Savage, and Tui. We we do this on TikTok all the time. We have this conversation on how much this is just complete bullshit. Uh, excuse how that sounds, but it is. It's just a way to like stereotype people compared to what they are, and the uh, the fact that you have just many terms to call a person is just a right fucking stupid. Because like, who are you to say what this person is, or what's not? Because you can colorize anyone you want, doesn't mean you know them. Where, where the, who and what makes you the have the same rights to to do that? Because at the end of the day, you are who you are. And if you try to act different, most likely someone's gonna fucking humble you. Hawaii, wherever you go. You do wherever you go, you're gonna get humbled. So you can colorize you can do whatever the hell you want, but it's not gonna change who we are. It's that's what I said. Like Cyber said it better. But you can't like I can't like I can't say any better than what Sabbath said. Because at the day as much as I want to say something, you can't. You're wrong. <clears throat> All right, no worries. Uh, JT Smola, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it, uh, brother. Uh, Lani, I know you jumped on. Uh, thank you so, so much for jumping on. Uh, what do you think, Lani? Uh, well, colorism, hell yeah, it's a form of racism. It's a form of internalized racism. So whether or not you believe that you're being racist or not, that shit is racism itself. You can't be, you know what I mean? For you to pick out a person based on the color of their skin, whether you're there whether you're Samoan or they're Samoan or you're Hawaiian and they're Hawaiian, it's just messed up. Like it shouldn't matter what color people are, but the fact that you're calling people out on it and not just saying, you know, talking about colorism, that's just, that is a form of racism. And I don't understand people don't understand that. Like if it's like, if it quacks, it's a fucking duck. You know what I mean? Like don't, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. You may not like it, but is racist nonetheless you know what i mean okay all right no worries uh thank you for sharing that lonnie uh, i do want to open up real quick for everybody on the panel did you guys want to disagree on anything or want to add on to what somebody said uh let me know right now before i move on to the next topic and if you guys want to add on or disagree to something somebody said nope i just want to say okay. that uh I, I i agree with you guys like i said i felt i felt like it it was the same i just didn't i didn't know how to 
to say it. And you're right. I was I was giving my family a pass in in a, in a way. It's just like I said, it is hard to speak. I just want to be open. It is hard talking to somebody that you do respect, but then when they say dumb shit, you know what? You know what I mean? You lose respect for them. But it is hard. But I'll I'll try to do better next. You know, next time I hear that shit. Hey, hey can I state it's okay. something? The best thing. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Hey, I apologize about my abruptness. Uh, when the mana rises, I can't, I can't really contain that. But just know and believe that I really do love y'all. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't mean none of this ill, ill feeling towards anybody. But uh, I'm passionate about this shit because my my kids are gonna have to deal with this when I'm long gone from here. So sorry. Don't be. Don't be sorry. That's your oh, passion. I like you guys. You don't yeah, I like you guys' passion. I love it. You don't need yeah. to be sorry. No. You not. You know what you're saying because we're here to learn, and that's the best thing we can do. Yeah. Sometimes we gotta take accountability. Like you guys called me on my bullshit. I was, I was tiptoeing around some shit. I really was because in my mind, in my heart, I love these people. You know, I yeah. want to educate these people, and I'm trying to do it the best way I know how. Everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has a point where you try to push them enough to where they just, you know, fuck it. I don't want to hear it anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and I don't want to cut them out of my lives because they're the only Samoan family I have that's close to me that my kids can learn. You know, I want them to be able to experience, even though my childhood wasn't the absolute 100% best, I still got to do that stuff with my family. Still got to go out, play volleyball with them. Still got to go and have dinners and luau's and all this other stuff, you know? And, you know, the umu, it w- you know, that's the stuff I want them to enjoy. But if I'm constantly in a, in a tug of war with my family, it sucks. Like, I've tried to do that a while, for a long time. And it, it, I feel like I'm, I'm the one missing out. But, you know, I do agree. I should stick up more. But thank you. I appreciate you, Savage Island. Don't ever feel that way. Hey, can we all normalize stopping apologizing for the way we feel really quick? <laughs> also, I have to step out. But um, Coconuts, he's going to be in here. I have to make dinner. I'll, I'll try to be back before you guys end this. Thank you. Hey, right, how are you? hey Will, can I just say something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Savage. Like, I really mean this from the heart. I don't blame our elders. You know, I know... I know that that may be contradict- a contradiction to what I've spoken here, but I, I really don't blame our elders because the lack of knowledge that they bear, um, the only thing I would blame them for is not having the effort to educate themselves, which is totally understandable, but I don't blame our elders. I will say this, they're on the way out the door. So if anything we can do here, right, if we didn't come in here with anything, I want to make sure that everybody on this panel, that the the goal that we're trying to reach is we leave something behind for the kids to run with. You get what I'm saying? Because none of this is actually going to matter if the kids don't pick it up. We're just fucking adults sitting here trying to find some commonality and some common ground. But I do I do know, and, and, I, and I'm a firm believer in trying to find solutions. So um, although a lot of the people in the comment section may find what we are saying harsh, just know that we are still brothers and sisters even though you may not believe that because at the end of the day, I will not let you sit there and struggle on the street. If I could help you, uh, regardless of what I've said here tonight, I will not let you do that. I promise. All right. No worries. Uh, thank you Savage, for sharing that. And thank you for everybody on the panel. Um, and if, if Savage, you, if Savage, you, you've been on my, you've been on my podcast for a long time. You know, the rules, you don't apologize on the Gov Club podcast. <laughs> but shout out to you but thank you for sharing that but i don't call, always appreciate you being real man uh rose you wanted to add on real quick before we go to the next topic go ahead rose yeah i just wanted to say like um what you were saying savage as far as like the elders um that they they didn't educate themselves i feel like just they didn't have the tools to do it right because they were so busy trying to survive trying to work the plantation take care of all the kids and just get us to the mainland so that we can have a better life. So we have to give them more credit because back then it was a lot more harder than it is now. We are so privileged now. We have so many opportunities and we need to give our ancestors more credit. We need to prop them up because they're watching over us and they always wanted better. Everyone wants better for their kids, no matter what. And that's what they wanted for us. So we just, 
we shouldn't be saying anything against the elders because that's not good karma. Um, and then I didn't get to finish what I said. Can you guys hear me? Am I, am I breaking in and out? Yeah, you, you're good now. You're good now. <laughs> you're good now. Go, go. Yeah, I think somebody proposed to you in the comment section. <laughs> Sorry, Rose, Rose, I need a second wife. Oh, what? Rose, 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 hey, Rose, Rose, hold the party. Go. Brother, brother, party drops, drops down. Go, 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 go. <laughs> so to finish what I was saying about colorism, I don't believe in colorism because it's turned into consumerism. The reason being is when big corps give people the idea that being dark skinned is ugly, it's poor, it's whatever, which back then it was different than what it is now, then people are going to buy products to make their skin lighter. And this is very, very prevalent with women. If you look at statistics right now, 50% of Koreans, Malaysians, and Philippines in, in, in the Philippines are buying skin lightening products. In Africa, 60%. Nigeria, 77%. And what these chemicals do is they're 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 caught they're they're bad chem their ble bleach is horrible. These chemicals are poisoning people, it's causing cancer, but people don't care. Why do they not care? Because for them and other countries, it's all about survival. Because light skin denotes better. Um, you know, you get a better husband if you're a, a, a woman in a poor, poor village and you want to try to get, you can marry off to a family. So it was all about survival. Here in America, we don't have that. We don't have to worry about that. So we can fix this problem here to try to influence other countries. But it, it's just so hard because all the other countries, especially these nations that want lighter skin, India, China, you're looking at billions of people the biggest populations, and that's a huge industry. So it's basically us against Big Corp. And that's all I got to say about it. Uh, no worries. Uh, thank you for sharing, my, uh, sharing that, Rose. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And shout out to everybody on the, on the live chat, man. I gotta give you guys a shout out real quick, man. You guys are you guys be going hard all night, man. You guys are going Can hard I all night. Can I say something to follow guys, up with yeah, what Rose yeah. has to say? Go ahead, Rokilo. So I, I agree with the whole, uh, you know, Asians and and all that, and and Thailand and how they it that that applies to their region. Um, here in America, when me being mixed, um, half black, half, and I'm it's not even like it's I'm African. I'm half like I have thirty eight percent African in me. Um, now. Colorism does apply to black people uh, because during slavery, the more fairer, the lighter you were, you were considered a what? The, and, and they they call you they call them house because they house were the same inside the correct inside the house. And if you were dark, I'm black motherfucker, you, I can say it, nigga, nigga, nigga. Correct. Now, in it, it, it does apply, and so when. When black, I'm so sorry, I've, I've got your name wrong. My God, you when, good, you good. Black, when black zero said that as a dude, it doesn't apply. I'm he he's right when it comes to dudes. I think with guys, that that has something to do with your egos or something. I don't know. I don't know when it colorism applying to men, but in the black community, col colorism does exist. As well, the the fairer you are, the prettier, the more you know, um, exotic or whatever you 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 come off as. So, um, I feel like, and this is nothing personal. I this is my first time actually. Um, I've, I'm familiar with a couple like Tuli uh, Marie. I've seen a couple of hers. I've never um, come across any of your. I'm just now coming across Rose hung, hung, Hungry Samoan. And um, this is nothing personal. This is at all. I just don't feel like it applies to you. Therefore, you don't think it exists. Because as someone who's lived it, as someone who grew up in Samoa, like Upolu, and then I moved to Pango, it didn't matter where I went. It didn't matter how much Samoa and I spoke, how far Samoa, how respectful I was. It was always like, oh, Orkenya, you know, Orkama, uh, so and so, so and so's daughter. And then it was always followed with, she must be black. Like, oh, she must, 
have black in her. And then that's when it's, oh, Galofai, you know, oh, poor thing. Like, as if it's a burden or as if it was like, I'm less fortunate that I'm mixed with black. Um, coming to Samoa, being in the military, that's how I left Samoa. I was 20 after high school. I had two options, either go on um, a, a cruise and dance, Polynesian um, in a dance group or join the army. And I joined the army. <laughs> um, but coming to South, oh, coming to the United States in, in uniform, me approaching my Samoan brothers and sisters in uniform, they they didn't associate themselves with me. They didn't want, they would look at me, look at my last name and be like, oh, you're Samoan? It, it didn't matter. As fair as I look, it's it's my lips. Um, Savage mentioned something about not knowing. Oh, Black Zero also. I, you, Miss Rose, you said something like you didn't even know you were Samoan. I didn't know I was Black until I was eight. And going back to the story where um, I was sitting at the table, my um, I called her my mom. She was my great aunt. But uh, she took her fork. And she stabbed me in my thigh because I was smacking my lips. And she told me to fix my hard ER lips. Like two, three days later, I go to school. And um, I still remember a little Mexican girl in my class. I heard her smacking her lips from a distance. And I, I turned around and I repeated that. I told her to fix her hard ER lips. The teacher heard me. I got taken to the principal's office. CPS got involved. Not even a couple months later, I was sitting at the airport in LAX, January 1st, 1997, going to Upolu. Um, Yo, let, me, let, me just, I mean, I let me just step in real quick. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for everybody on the live chat. Let me just read some comments real quick before we go to the, the next topic. Uh, I think uh, OTG said, highest respect to the elders, ancestors for getting us here. Thank you so much. Hey, that's uh, the Uso right there. Shout out to the homeboy. That's my Uso yeah, right out, there. Uh, for sure, man. Shout out to you. Thank you for being, being here for the first time. I see infinite lives. I uh, say, I think uh, Pacific Islanders infiltrate the system and we need more props for that. Thank you so much for you. Shout out to you, man. Uh, thank you for so much for being here. And uh, last but not least, Muchi. Uh, Muchi said, uh, Rose, I would definitely love to talk more about this with you over dinner or something. Oh, shit. Shooting his shot. All right. Shout out to you, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, go for it. That's my other handle. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> All right. And then shout out to Boss yeah, Lady Baba. Malia, thank you so much. Uh, with the Super Chat donation. Much love, Malia. Uh, black is beautiful. Thank you so much for everybody. Yeah, shout out to everybody in the live chat. Thank you so much. Uh, but we're going to move on to the last topic and the most controversial topic. We're going to finish up this podcast to close with. Um, I do want to bring up on, uh, I want to talk about institutionalized racism. And I know a lot of you guys talk about how a lot of Pacific Islanders, I, knew, I think Rosie spoke about a lot of this when you mentioned that uh, a lot of times Pacific Islanders, even though we do understand and accept that colonialism does exist and it did happen to us, uh, but I do see it for a lot of people, for a lot of Pacific Islanders, they're kind of blaming the white men uh, for all their problems and not taking accountability for where they're at. Um, so I want to open up that conversation. Does, uh, does the colonialism, racism, or the things that, that, that happened in the past, does that still affect us today, uh, living here in modern age, 2022? Or is it just for a lot of Pacific Islanders out there just using racism, using white, blaming the white men for all their problems? Like you, I think Rosie mentioned, like, you know, uh, the... Asians come in and they build the businesses and we can blame the Asians for coming in and, and taking over the economy, but none of us are actually taking action and building the business, putting the work and being lazy and want to blame the white people. So I know for a lot of people, this could be very controversial. Uh, but I, in my opinion, I think that I think uh, that what happened in the past, I don't think, it, especially if you live in America where we are today with all the opportunities here in America, I don't think that has nothing to do with the ability to, to elevate yourself in, in the community. But hey, that's my opinion, but I want to open up the conversation with you. The inter inter interstitialized racism and the racism that, that would happen in the past of colonialism, does it still affect now or are our people just making excuses for where they are at in life? Um, I want to bring, I'll start off with you, Daniela, because I know you can't, you don't want to go after Savage. <laughs> I know this is, a, this is a good topic. 
because uh, I think me and you have uh, similar beliefs about this. What do you think about that? Uh, for a lot of islanders, maybe it's just like racism. I know you live in uh, you live in New Zealand, and you, you talked about this. In New Zealand, a lot of people blame the white man for taking over the, the country and having this and that instead of that. No one's really doing anything about it. Uh, but what's your thoughts about it's just a racism? Does it still affect us today in modern society, 2022? Does it exist? Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, looking back at it now, I've been called many things, but is it a barrier? Absolutely not. Um, and there's a, a whole heaps of reasons for that. Um, I'm probably the most least likely of opportunities to be able to navigate the white man system uh, in the construction sector here and have the impact that I've had on Pacific and Maori young men. Uh, well, if the white man's racism and systemic in- systemic racism within institution was so prevalent, I wouldn't have made it. You know, being a, a Tongan-born overstayer, running away from immigrant uh, immigration uh, offices and, you know, hiding in fucking streets in all corners of whatever house I could find myself in when the cop car could, could drive by, I've gone through that shit. And to be able to go through the system and navigate it in a way where uh, the impact of that has been positive for my people, that's why I don't believe it. The, the, the big reasons of why I think a vast majority of our brothers and sisters who think in this sense is we victimize ourselves beyond the point of we've forgotten the money of our ancestors. And that was, and I think Black Zero spoke about it in the sense of fight back. And now our tools of fighting is no longer the, the kalapu of the Tongans or the spears of our ancestors in other islands. It's through our words and through our actions, the way that we navigate through these systems. Yeah, some of the systems and policies aren't made to benefit us, but how do, how do we change it? We get into the seats of where those important changes are made. I, for one, has made it to that point and it had major policies, especially around mental health, uh, helped in terms of um, delivering solutions to our people rather than discriminating them. Um, one of the projects that I've shared with Will is that now the government's reaching out to him to employ me as a subcontractor to have a more holistic view on in terms of Māori and Pacifiki uh, mental health approaches here in New Zealand. So when we speak about you know system systemic racism and whatnot, I think we've forgotten the the mana that our ancestors carried all throughout the Moana when they navigated the Pacific Ocean. They didn't give a fuck whatever it was on the next island. They went there, they saw, and they integrated themselves with the people there, and we adopted certain cultural values from them. And I think it's not the same landscape that we do now, but it's the same principle for me. I'm in a world where it's predominantly European-centric. They dominate the hierarchy of society. How the fuck do I get on top? And I'm not going to shit on my people on the way there. I'm going to use my ability to be a, a, a communicator, what we call as a talano, or we were the best orators of the Pacific Ocean. And when we speak about the English language and talking about white man language, blah, 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 no, I adopt the language because my ancestors were the greatest oratory of the Pacific. And I navigate through with the same principle. So when we talk about these limitations, we put that limitation there. Whether that came through the white man or not, but we still adopt it. I mean, look at us, we're adults. We can comprehend and conceive things voluntarily and we can dissect them and use them to our advantage. So I don't use excuses. And I think a lot of our people have forgotten who they are and they've victimized themselves based on their color. I'm Samoan, and I'm Tongan and the white man's racist towards me, but you can start a business, right? You can sell a, a service or a product. We do it on social media. We do it in in our ventures as entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. So yeah, I don't don't believe it. So that's my take. All right, no worries. Thank you for sharing that, Uh, Daniela. I'm gonna go to the fellows real quick and I'll come to you ladies. Um, uh, Let me pass on you to Black Zero. Uh, uh, Daniel, what do you think about, you know, a lot of business founders blaming the white man from things that happened in the past uh, today for why they're not where they wanna be. Do you think there's there's, there's some logic to it? There's some truth to it? Or what do you think about that? Well, um, I hope I don't get hate for this, but as a people, as a Samoan people, you guys are considered, we are considered Asian. 
me, because I'm Avakasi, I'm considered black first. So I didn't, I mean, it's just in the area I live in and jail and the, the society, you guys are not considered black if you're light skinned. If people find out you're a Pacific Islander and they and white men say, hey, Asian Pearson, I'm half black. I don't get that same consideration. I, I'm i black first until they see my last name, which obviously is after I've been punched, kicked, or thrown into a police car, which has happened multiple multiple times without provocation. Um, I have been, I've lost custody of my kids just for showing up. I literally had my, my son had a rash on his dick and I told my, my ex that, Hey, I'm not sending him back. You have a new boyfriend. I don't know what this is until we go to court. And I got penalized for that, <laughs> you know, just, but if it, if it was a woman or if it was anybody else, it would have been fine. They would have been like, oh, you were just doing what was necessary. Let her take him to a doctor because my lawyer said the same thing. But no, I almost went to jail for it. So I don't – it's hard for me to say that most Samoans, and I say most, that are light or that live on Samoa and that don't experience the American racism because American racism is different from every other country. It's way different from other countries because I've been to other countries. I was in the military for five years. I've lived in other countries. And I dev I've never felt like I was nothing in other countries, even though they had racism. I never felt like I was less than a citizen. But I have in America multiple times. And I was also in law enforcement, believe it or not. <laughs> and I've been behind the curtain and I've been in the locker rooms and I've heard what people call us. And so when I say, so on one hand, because I'm half Samoan, my cousins and my uncles, my dad don't understand the racism that I go through or my mother goes through or my two brothers go through. So on one hand, I can say no, because my uncle recently was saying stuff about, oh, Black Lives Matter needs to work harder. They needed basically dog whistles. And I'm like, how can you not empathize for the people who are literally fighting for the rights that you guys get to piggy piggyback off of? Because that's what actually happens. Anybody else wants the rights? All you got to do is fight for black people's rights and then steal it from them. That's literally what happens every single fucking time. So... I love being Samoan. I'll be Samoan to the day I die. But in America, I'm black first. And that's not my choice. All right. All right. No worries. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Daniel. Uh, I'll pass it to you. Uh, 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 Rose, Rose, what do you think, Rose? Go ahead. Do you think about, what do you think about the it's just like racism and outside the culture? Um, you know, does, it, does it affect us, you know, especially the, a lot of Pacific Islanders blaming the white people. Does it affect us as far as our growth and opportunities here, living here in modern society in America? Yeah, I feel like anytime you're blaming, you're becoming that victim and you're never going to grow. You're in that mentality. So I agree with um, Daniela on that. It's, um, it exists, all these, these, but it doesn't have to be a barrier. We are... racism, colorism, discrimination, we can get past that and we can build. We can when, when I say it exists, it's because I don't rec I don't I don't look at it and, and have it affect my life. I know it exists, but it's not in my reality because my reality is growing. And if that exists in my life, then it's gonna just be down. It's gonna keep stagnant. So that's all I gotta say. No worries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Rose. Uh, I'm moving on to you. Uh, is there, is there a, what do you think, is there about the, you know, racism that a lot of police violence blame on the white people? Does that have an effect on us? Or uh, are we the uh, masters of our own destiny? We can control what, uh, what we want to do here in, in America. Hey, Will, I'm sorry, man. I can't hear you, man. You've been cutting in and out. All right. I think. Oh, hang on. Oh, good Lord. Okay, well, I'll come back to you. I'll come, I'll come back. I'll come back to you. Uh, let me pass it on to our, our new guest, and then I'll and then I'll uh, go ahead. Um, JC, 
Team Walla? What do you think about Team Walla? What do you think about the uh, Pacific Islanders blaming white people for the problems? You know, colonialism, I, all the things happened in the past. Like, honestly, I'm going to put them in the best way I can. Bro, there's no excuse. Like, there's no excuse behind it. Like, for people to want to use the white card, yeah, you can throw it around and say they did whatever. But let's understand this. Like, um, like the brother above said, you forget where we came from. You forget where, you know, how you were upbringings. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that a lot of the cultures have gone through a lot of things and they don't use that as a crutch. They stay strong. They keep it going and they keep it pushing because fuckers is going to like, they go around starting. They're always there to start and try to hinder your process and try to make you less than what you are. And what you need to do is say, fuck that. Fuck you. Excuse my language. Suck my dick. Because at the end of the day, I'm me. You're you. You can't stop my growth on what I need to do. Because at the end of the day, bro, I'm going to be me. You've done what you, your ancestors have done what you've done in the past. My ancestors, ancestors have shown their evolution on what they brought to us. We've learned from our ancestors. We bring it on to our children. We want to leave something for our children to know this isn't how it seems. You're, we're stronger, like stronger than this, and we're not gonna sit around and let. That's that's just a crutch, bro. People use that as a crutch. I'm gonna put it like that. And if you're gonna use them as a crutch, then damn well be, then be one American, because, bro, you they're doing the same thing. As poly that we are, we I feel like we're sometimes slept on a lot. And those that are mixed, like a few of us, black, Filipino, whatever you are, there's a lot of like racism in, in between that. And they want to throw around the card and say shit. And it's fucked up because fuckers have no rights to criticize who you are, what you can do. And it's just dumb that people people allow themselves to go that far. Like, really? You don't use that? It makes no sense. All right. All right. Thank you, uh, JT. Uh, th thank you for sharing that, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there using that as a crutch. Appreciate that. I'll pass it on to you. Lani, <clears throat> what do you think, Lani? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Lani. My bad. My bad. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so I think it's a tricky question because I think it kind of ties back to like, I know we're all saying we're all Pacific Islanders, but obviously within the Pacific, there's different groups. I'm not just talking about polys, but you have Melanesians, Americanesians, you know, that we're all considered Pacific Islander, but yet we're all look and are very much different. So like for me, I'm Native Hawaiian, my husband's Samoan. Do I think institutional racism affects us? No. Do I think that we can have, that we have better, that we have the same opportunities as everybody else? Yes, I think that we do. However, my oldest daughter is half Papua New Guinean and she always, 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 always gets assumed and gets planned out for being 100% black all the time. And she's not, and, and if it's different, because if you take the word, she looks black, you know what I mean? She has this, the black skin, the black hair, but she's Pacific Islander, she's Papua New Guinean. But she always gets pushed to the side and gets assumed as being, oh, you're Meauli, you're you're African American, you know what I mean? So for me to say that does institution does institutionalized racism exist? Yes, it does. Does it affect me personally? Probably not. But I will say that in the future it probably will affect my daughter because and not just because of the way and I'm well because of the way she looks, you know what I mean. And I feel like there's that's the conversation that a lot of us don't really, you know, talk about. Is like there are some of us I think in the in the Pacific community where that stuff's not going to affect us, but I think that there's many of us, or many you know, or those that we are related to, whether it's by blood, our children, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters, who maybe you know Afakasi or 
their their parents may be, you know, African American or Fijian Nui or Fijian Vanuatu and Papua New Guinean. So they do get pushed into that corner. You know what I mean? So I think for me it I don't think that it affects me. And I can see how a lot of our people can victimize themselves in that way. But I think we have to be aware that there are people within our community that will and can be affected by situations like that. So just because it doesn't affect us, you know, just because it doesn't affect all of us, doesn't mean that some of us won't be affected in the end. So yeah. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Alani, thank you so much. Uh, I'll pass it to uh, oh, our newest guest, uh, Bobino73. Hey, Bobino, thank you for taking the time to be on here for the first time. Shout out to you. And uh, yeah, you want to share your thoughts? Uh, go ahead, man. What do you want to add on? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to start off by saying, you know, that I'm full blooded Tongan. So, you know, what I'm about to say is coming from that. Uh, and I, I, I'm from the Bay Area. But um, I just wanted to speak on just basically like, like I'm a first generation American or a Tongan American, you know, my parents, they both from Tonga came out here or whatever. But my thing was like, uh, I grew up, you know, in poverty, you know, I don't know if you ever been to East Oakland, you know, in the deep, you you already know. So, you know, I mean, now I done moved to a situation where it's like, you know, I don't live with my parents, you know, I, I live on my own. I, I got kids and all this, the whole shit, but I think that like what brought me to that point wasn't necessarily anything that crazy. I mean, I, I looked for a job online on Indeed, you know, filled out the application, boom, got a job, and then just kind of moved my, you know, my way around. But the thing is too, like I've, I mean, I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to say that, you know, we got equal opportunities because I do also feel like in America, if you first generation American, your parents don't, they don't, they can't put you on game on nothing, none of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll point out an example, credit system. You know what I mean? Like I grew up in a family that they don't believe in going to the dealership and getting, you know, and getting the car out. Like I'm going to credit system, I'm writing that shit on the, you know, right there on East 14, you feel me? Oh, shit. On it, you know? Oh, shit. <laughs> But I'm, a, but you see, like, as I got older and I had a stable, you know, situation, I was able to understand what what's really going on and what where my place is in America. Now, I feel like to an extent, for Tongan people, you know, and Polys in general, we tend to have we have the hardest heads, bro. You know, like we, we ignorant. I mean, not. I mean, I would have. I don't want to call nobody ignorant. I'm not trying to say that. We just not like we. We come from a, a traditional of like I know what I'm talking about, so you listen to me. There's not really a conversation going on, and in America, right, it's done a little different. Now, I've been around rich white people too, rich or not even just white Indians, Chinese, Asians. You know, if you know, you know, right? And Cali. They out there now. The reason why they in their those places is because they know things that we don't. But we're all on the same playing field. They just got generations of people who's been there who can game them up. My I went to school with kids who, you know, we we just came from the same school. But how you working in you know this big tech company? Oh, because your your people know this and they told you to put you on on these certifications. Do this and my parents didn't do that. They couldn't do that for me. You know what I'm saying? And and it's harder also when you come from those traditions because really you got to have an open mind to really understand what somebody telling you. Like you're going to think that it's the white man trying to tell you what to do, but they really putting you on game. You're just not taking it that way. They really are telling you something that you need, but to really put yourself up. Now, I mean, I done, you know, like just different things you could think of, like, uh, you know, trading and investing your money, the ideas of having a business. Now, I'm all about, you know, keeping our culture and, and all that. But I feel like in order for us to do that here in America, now I'm not speaking for anybody in New Zealand or out there because y'all got different shit going on over there. But in America, 
you know, you really got to know what you're doing. Okay, I got to apply for this LLC. Okay, now I'm going to go open this uh, bank account over here and, uh, uh, you know, get myself eligible for a credit loan, you know, a business loan. Boom, throw that thing in there. But, you know, when you when you broke, you come from poverty, you can't see like that and be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, Hell no, I ain't doing nothing like that. But they don't like if you don't know nobody who really went through that, went through those trials and tribulations to put you on. And if they're not your parents, but you're going to have to figure that out on yourself. And all those trials and tribulations will go through you. But your parents, your, your kids, if you are able to, you know, relay that information and have that open communication with your kids and they actually want to listen to you, then you might be able to pass it on. But, you know, the way our traditions work sometimes, too, it's like, you know, you don't know nothing. You young. You haven't been through nothing yet. So I don't even want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like Until you go out and do something crazy. Right. Then they're like, how the hell you did that? And you're like, well, you know, this is how I did it. But, you know, when you are already there, it's like you almost feel like, you know, the American part of you. So like, man, you wasn't with me. You know, Ian Simini with me at my house, bro. I'm, I don't know you. Like, you know what I mean? People get like that, you know, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. That's how it goes. Bino. Hey, but Bino, I just want to step in real quick. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, uh, Togo. Man, I always appreciate you. I just want to, for the sake of time, man, always thank you for jumping on. Um, I want to pass it on to you, uh, Savage, Savage Island. I know you're the last one. Go ahead, Savage. Uh, what do you think about uh, the topic we discussed? You know, uh, there's a few. Positive violence is blaming white people, colonialism for the struggles they're experiencing now in modern society. What do you think? Well, first, I want to just say respect to the young Toko and repping the town like that because, you know, it's the realest shit I've ever heard. And, um, you know, whenever you got the youth <laughs> telling you, whenever you got the youth telling you that shit, that tells you something's wrong in the hierarchy. You get what I'm saying? But um, to get back to my point, does institutionalized racism exist? Is it is it functional? Is it, you know, who am I blaming for? So I originally started um, my, my um, I, I worked with gang prevention unit uh, underdog originally in um, in Castlemont High School. Shout out to um, uh, the Latus, I mean, the Malapos. I mean, uh, all the Tavakes, all the families out there. Um, I was the dude you sent in when all the kids wasn't listening, right? The black kids, the brown kids, the, the Tongan and the Samoan kids. Cause I'm the only motherfucker they'd be afraid of. So, you know, when it was three o'clock and there was a fight, all the, all the, all the security didn't want to go out there because these kids was carrying shit. Right. And so the cops would make, would, would wait for sure. Like guys like me, shout out to Vaha and Gerald, we would have to go and deescalate shit before school police would come in because they was too afraid to get uh, riled up and shit within the crowd. Now, if you've ever, if you ever, been in a situation like that, it's not easy to de-escalate. So they would rather just send in the, the people within the tribe to deal with their own. So 2016, I get moved out to Vegas. Been out here in Vegas for six years now, working for the Clark County School District. And um, I'm under investigation, and I'm not supposed to talk about this, but uh, I'm being charged with misdoctrine and uh, breaking of oath because I was a uh, I was harboring kids in my class that were running away from the cops and majority of them were black and brown. They wouldn't go to their counselors. They wouldn't do other shit. They just, I mean, there was kids prostituting themselves. There was kids selling off, off of the streets and all because of the lack of opportunities that they wouldn't trust the white or Asian counselors. They would come to me, right? They would come to me. So when people talk about institutionalized racism and having opportunities that they have no access to, keep this in mind. If you believe that you're walking sometimes through a, a, a veil and although you can see past the veil, but you can't get past it, that's what it's like being black or brown or minority in America under an institutionalized racism program or security system, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Because you see the opportunities, they're always going to be out of your reach. And I'm, I'm living proof of that because these kids always came to me for solution and I can never give it to them. How do you feel when the cops pull you over asking you at, like at four in the afternoon while you're trying to go home asking you, do you know this kid? And you got to tell them, yes. 
okay, well, we need need some information from you. And the hood side of you is telling you, don't snitch on that kid. But then your profession is telling you, if you don't, you lose your job. That's what I'm facing right now. So when people want to talk this good shit, oh, well, you really need to stop making excuses for yourself. Understand some. When you're a kid and you ain't got no outlet, what then? What then? What are you supposed to tell that kid? Well, cheer up, kid. You'll find some way out. Fuck you. I got to deal with that. There are people across this nation who are seeing that firsthand, and you expect me to do, to lie to this fucking kid? Hell no, because the same people who would do that would do that to my kids. Straight up. My daughter didn't even know Martin Luther King died. She didn't even know he got assassinated. I had to tell my daughter that shit. I had to tell my daughter that shit. They don't even teach shit the right way. Don't tell, don't talk to me about institutionalized racism. Because right now, they're not teaching slavery. They're teaching indentured servitude. It was a contract, agreed upon terms and conditions. And that's what the kids are learning today in the public schools. So when you say disadvantage, understand this. You're talking about misinforming the kids so they're disenfranchised and they never know victory. They never know success. I'm in that, dog, in the trenches. That's me. Don't come up here talking that good shit that it don't exist because you ain't in it. You ain't in it. So when you ask this question to people who want to give an answer, oh, I don't think, I don't think it, uh, you know, really, it's really out there like that. Understand this. You ask that question to somebody who's in the shit, who's really in the shit, and see what answer you get. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for sharing that, um, Savage. Um, yeah, go ahead, Daniel. I know you want to add on. Go ahead, Daniel. All right. No, he's a hundred percent right. And I remember growing up because I have dyslexia. And like I like I try to read out there. Like I can understand what I'm reading. That's not the problem. My problem is is when I from here out to here, I have problems with with uh, the way words words sound and stuff like that. I also have a stutter. That's why I, you know sometimes when I'm trying to say things, it doesn't come out the the proper way. Um, and growing up, I was literally told I would never graduate high school. I'm 34 years old. I'm back in college because technology has allowed me to keep up. This is not not because it, it literally it's, I'm not saying that institutional racism was keeping Daniel down. I'm saying that these barriers are there for a reason and they are there to keep people like me who are supposedly stupid. I was told by teachers that I was stupid, that I would never grow up to. I was called garbage man in like third grade. And I didn't know what that meant until the teacher goes, oh, because you're only good for taking out the garbage. What the fuck? I literally had my life stopped for about five, no, yeah, it was five years because somebody decided to say something that wasn't true. There was a videotape that allowed me to get off scot-free. It took me five years to get the videotape. And when I finally got the videotape and I showed the DA, I was the happiest day of my life. And you know what she said to me? Her actual fucking words? I still believe I can get 13 people to believe that you are a monster. That destroyed my belief in humanity. That's all I got to say about that shit. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Daniel, uh, did anybody want to add on to that uh, before I wrap up the, the podcast for tonight? Oh, um, sorry. I, I didn't get a chance to speak on the institutionalized racism, but no, 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 no. real go, quick, you go. just real quick, um, I didn't really, it didn't, I didn't grasp the, the point of view i like i institutionalized racism didn't uh, until i had a child until i had i have a five-year-old and long story short um we moved from virginia to monterey california um i put him in school for the very first time he never went to daycare never went to a babysitter he only stayed around family he's used to going outside he's used to the the classroom setting wasn't wasn't a, 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 you know, something he was familiar with. Long story short, because my son is more black than Samoan, his last name, he looks like a, a black kid. Um, I was told that he was slow. 
um, I was told that he just was completely just disregarded. He has a little speech impediment. Um, the school recommended that I take him to special ed. Now I have no, no, nothing against that. So I considered it. I got to special ed and they told me, well, no, he's perfectly fine. He should be where he was. Um, one day, my, sk- my kid starts school in September. By October, I get a call. Um, I go to the school. I only live a block away. Long story short, the, the school hid. I had to find out through my five-year-old that he was restrained by three adults. Um, they called him unruly on paper. When I brought it up to the principal, she looked at me and was like, well, if this isn't a good school for you, go somewhere else. Not, hey, let's find out. And I, I asked to sit in the classroom. Um, may I stay? May I volunteer my time? It didn't matter. They told me because of COVID, um, I, I, it, it, it exists. It exists. And I'm going through trying to sue the, the district for a couple of different things that happened to my son at this school for the little six months that he had lived here with me. He now lives in Virginia. He's now back on the East Coast with his father and he is progressing. And I just wouldn't have, it didn't, it didn't apply until it actually happened. Thank you so much for, for listening. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for everybody on the panel. Uh, shout out to everybody on the live chat. And, uh, and we have come to the conclusion of the podcast. Y'all, man, dude, we had a great show for you guys tonight, man. Thank you so much, everybody on the live chat. You guys were going off and shout out to all the panel guests tonight, uh, for sharing their truths and having open conversations, whether we agree or disagree. And shout out all to the public guests and the new ones being here for the first time. Shout out to you guys. And especially, I see a lot of new people on the live chat. Thank you for being, here for the, being part of the podcast. Don't forget to appreciate the content. If you made it this far all the way to the end of the content, appreciate these conversations that I have. Uh, please, if you don't mind, smash and press that like subscribe button real quick. Show me some love to the channel. And of course, I'm definitely going to drop all the social media links for everybody here on the panel so you can support them as well if you want to get more of the content. And uh, man, we, we we saw all sides today. We saw, we saw anything you could have asked from this conversation. You saw all of it. You saw all of it. So, uh, man, we had some we had some good uh, we had some good conversations tonight. I bet you want to ask i finish up with all the live guests real quick. What's your final thoughts for tonight's topic? And of course, uh, drop your soil. Uh, how can people find you? People watching this right now, how can people find you? So make sure you let them know so that way they can follow you and continue to get more of your content. So I'll start with our newest guest real quick. Um, I'll start with you, uh, Rokila. Rokila, what's your final thoughts for tonight's discussion and how can people find you real quick? Go ahead. I loved it. I enjoyed just being here. Um... I, I hope that with time I get better with this whole social, but everybody here, I, I mean, blessings, peace, love, and guidance to every last one of you. My name on TikTok is ro.killa, K-I-L-L-A. My IG is a gay, um, a, a, not a gay, it's a girl, sorry, a girl named <laughs> underscore Rosie. Um, thank you guys so much. Blessings. All right, no worries. And thank you for jumping on for the first time. I wrote killer. I'll pass it on to you, uh, Daniel, for the first time. Thank you for being on here, man. Uh, what's your final thoughts for tonight's discussion? And thank you for being yourself. And how can people find you? Yes, uh, I said it in the beginning. I'll say it again. Uh, on TikTok, it's black zero underscore 25. That is black zero underscore 25 on TikTok. And Instagram is black zero 25 1988. That's black zero 25 1988 on Instagram. I love the panels. I love the fact that everybody has different uh, different avenues of thinking, different ways of connecting information. It's really, really cool. And sometimes, I, even though I went through my own experiences, hearing some of your guys' own experiences, it also it made me check myself in a lot of things that I was thinking or not check myself so much as reevaluate some things that I was already needing to reevaluate. Um, but thank you guys for listening to me. And I know I got a little bit emotional, but like that shit didn't happen too long ago. So still kind of sore. Uh, love you all. And thank you guys very much for having me. All right. No worries. And thank you so much, uh, Black Zero. Thank you for so much for jumping on. I'll pass it to you, uh, Isera. <laughs> thank you for jumping on tonight. 
and for your philosophizer uh, views. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but go no ahead, man. Uh, final thoughts on how can people find you? I know damn well I didn't say a goddamn thing since I've been on this live. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you guys' story is very interesting. I'm very sorry I couldn't say much. Not to mention, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm a Joe Schmo, guys. I don't know much about this. Uh, I was saying uh, it, was, it was good to hear everybody's stories. Uh, hope to watch it. Hope to watch this live again. Uh, How can they find you? How can they find you? Uh, well, what? How can they find you on social media? Oh, um, you can just find me on uh, TikTok, Instagram. Just look up Mr. Coconut. You'll you'll find me. I, I do. I make videos. Just uh, you know, superhero stuff, special effects, whatnot. Like, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no worries. Uh, thank you for some of uh, thank you for jumping on. I'll pass it on to you. Uh, Rose, Rose, uh, what's your final thoughts? Uh, Rose, and how can people find you, Rose? Especially for Mushi, because he's looking for that dinner tonight. He needs to find you. <laughs> go, go ahead, Rose. Um, I just want to thank you for being here and having this open discussion. Um, I feel like we read a lot of stuff and we had a little bit of difference here and there, but for the most part, positive change for the future and what we want to just spread love and that's what it's all about because we're tired of the hate we're tired of discrimination it has to stop it has to stop with us we the ones that could so appreciate you all so much thank you will for bringing all together you can find it on instagram i don't do tiktok i just do instagram at hungry samoans my tags right there and yeah all i guess is just i'm just grateful. All right, no worries. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Rose. I'll always jumping on, and I've definitely dropped the links to your podcast so people can support you as well. Uh, I pass it to you, uh, Daniela. Daniela, go ahead. Um, final thoughts and how can people find you? It's always good to have these conversations because um, you take take away, you know, the lived experience, which is what we've heard today. You take that away and you reassess your own life and see where areas of exposure you've had that you didn't recognize through the words of other people. And that's always great. That's, that's why I love being on this panel and, you know, being challenged is always a thing that I look forward to because it's, um, it either reaffirms or allows me the opportunity to look at my own sets of ideologies and belief systems. So, so everyone on the panel, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and you know, the manner that that's been spread and allows me to speak my own experience and how I look at the world and the way that I see it. Um, in terms of social media, I've always said this, don't find me, but if you want to cancel me or want to, um, you know, have a talano, find me on Will's page. I'm only on Instagram, uh, four eyes, one lens, uh, and he'll probably drop a handle. So yeah, thank you to everyone. And Will, again, thank you for having this platform because these conversations need to be had, but at the same time, we need to also, um, uh, aim at having real life solutions like savages say groundworks it's all good and well to chop it up and have a talanoa, but if we're not doing the work, then it don't mean shit. So, yeah. All right. No worries. Thank you, Daniela. For, uh, thank you, Daniela. Always appreciate you being on here on, on the panel. And last but not least, uh, Savage, uh, your final thoughts. And I know we didn't get to that topic, Savage, about Christianity, but if you want to <laughs> add on some of that real quick to close it off. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts and how can people find you, Savage? Uh, yeah. If you so desire, if you want to find me, you'll find me. I really don't want to drop shit, but um, I just wanted to thank Will and everybody on the panel for uh, for just being a part of this. You know, a hundred years from now, when the generations of my grandchildren watch this, I hope that they see uh, that you see Grandpa at work. You know, Pierre, if you're watching and you're listening, kid, um, I love you. Coach Savage loves you. There ain't nothing they could uh, they can impend on me, bro. They ain't gonna get, get. They don't got shit on me, and it was worth losing this job to make sure a good kid like you, you know, you you go on living your life. Um, yeah, man. You know, my name's Savage Island, so that these motherfucking colonizers never forget that James Cook came onto the island of New Way, and before it was New Way, they called it Savage Island. So I'll make sure that you motherfuckers never forget that. That's why I bear this name. Motherfuckers look at me and think, oh, this dude's cuckoo in the mind. I wear face mask right now while I'm saying this. 
you, there's a lot of things that could be wrong with me. But the one thing you will never question is the authenticity of my mind, my body, and my spirit as I speak this. Peace and honor to the ancestors who've come before us. I love y'all. All right, no worries. Thank you so much, man. Shout out to everybody on the panel guests and, of course, all my newest guests and the public guests. Shout out to you guys. Uh, thank you for being here for the first time. We appreciate you guys on the live chat. Always tuning in for weekly shows. We do this every single Wednesday. So if you just tuned in right now, definitely go back to the beginning of the episode so you can catch all the content and the discussions that we had. And, of course, we do this every single Wednesday. We always have a hot topic or discussion regarding taboos or culture. So if you want to tune in, press that like and subscribe button real quick. Uh, for next week's show, we're going to have a whole different panel and different guests and a different topic dis uh, to discuss. And, of course, uh, to all a lot of people out there for the first time, uh, I'll drop all their social media links in the, on the bottom below so you can follow them and please support all their channels as well. But nevertheless, all you guys out there, you guys have a great night to the panel. Much love to you guys. Thank you for having being here. Be great host. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. You guys have a great night tonight. Peace, y'all. Peace.